is everyone doing today? Saturday night? Feel all right? Let's have some fun. How's everyone doing? We got a nice little variety stream planned tonight. Uh, nothing big planned. Uh, for those that are unaware, we're kind of between projects right now. Um, we're waiting on a bunch of stuff from AliExpress to show up. So for the next few weeks, I'm going to try and switch things up and try and do random odd stuff on streams. So there won't be any grand unifying project over the next little while. So tonight we're going to be doing some Ender 3 modding. Because I got to rip this... Um, how can I word this? Not properly functioning hot end extruder combination off of it. And we got to put something new on it. So I have a bunch of gubbins here on my bench. I have an extruder that should work because it's a Mobius. Um, I have a bunch of stuff. So we're going to just slap together a hot end. We're just going to grab what I have and just make a hot end. Can't be that hard. And then we're going to get it up and printing. So hope you're all having a great night. Want to let you know that tonight's stream is sponsored by Thangs. They have reached out to me and they want to... Man, I'm screwed up my lines that I haven't written yet because I do everything on the fly. They like the content I create and they want to help out. So they've reached out and they are sponsoring this stream. And actually that is a good thing because my son has recently got into games. He's three years old next month or this month. No, next month. It's, it's the end of February. I know February's got a few short of days. But it's not quite March yet, but it's his birthday next month, so we've been playing games. And one of his little games he got is a color and number matching game, which has these dice. Now, what I did was, I went on thangs.com, and I found this nice little dice tower. Now, he's at the age where skulls don't scare him yet, okay? So I found this nice little skull-shaped uh, dice tower here, and you know what? I printed it. So he actually played with this today. Um, he hasn't broken it yet, and he's not scared of the spider on it. But he knows to put the dice in it. And yeah, so this was uh, 26 hours on the switch wire, 0.2 layer height. Uh, some Sunloo PLA rainbow, which I like the colors, but I don't like the way it prints. It tends to under extrude, but yeah. So if you want to print one of these of your own, this prints without supports, by the way. I have a link in the description. If you want to go to Thangs, create an account, sign up, download some things, print some Thangs, share some Thangs. Go to Thangs. Thank you for sponsoring the stream tonight. So, tonight's project, the Ender 3. So I kind of feel bad. Because what I have installed with it, I've recently upgraded the board on it. I was going to try and do, uh, knock two things out at once. I was going to do some testing on a new controller board for it. It's a RepRap firmware compatible controller board uh, with built-in Wi-Fi. It's a nice all-in-one solution. And I was going to test the uh, BIQ H2 extruder. Now, for those that remember, this extruder um, hot end combination was a little bit of uh, not exactly the, it didn't it didn't gel well it didn't mesh properly um, in more ways than one so we are going to rip it off and I have a M4 extruder uh, a Voron M4 we're going to slap on and then we are going to somehow make a hot end I have a bunch of random components um, we're going to try and make an all metal hot end because Frankly, this thing right here that it comes with in the PTFE liner is, I don't like it. So we're not going to put it back in. So, let me catch up on chat because I, uh, I like to see what everyone's talking about. Have you made a tutorial for webcam, mainsail, and clipper? Um, it, their webcams are supported by mainsail and fluid by default. Uh, what you have to do is let me pull up I have a printer online I believe yes I do so what you would do I don't have a webcam hooked up to this one but I think it's you go to not there where is it uh, printers adjust dashboard layout no nope, that's not it I'm missing something here I can't remember what it is 
Yeah, you turn on cameras there. So you go to dashboard, dash dashboard layout. I'm missing a setting. Services. Oh, you, yeah, go to UI settings. And then there should be enable webcam. So camera, enable. And then you go to your dashboard. Adjust dashboard layout. Make sure you have cameras turned on. And then if you had a camera, it would show up. But I don't have a camera plugged in, so I got nothing down here. So that's it should be enabled. You don't really need to uh, do anything. It's automatic. Hello from Sweden. Hello from Canada. Let me get the music going. There we go. How is the Dice Tower age appropriate for a three-year-old? Because he doesn't know. That's how. He's at that age where he it, it, everything is fun. It's, it's bright and it's got shiny colors. He loves it. And he hasn't broken it yet. So let's see how long it is. <laughs> how long that lasts. Okay. So... Let's do the extruder first. So what I have here is an M4 extruder. Um, it's a belted geared extruder, it's a DIY. But I found somebody had made some files for it to add this little bracket onto it. I believe it's on Thingiverse. So let me see if I can find it and it should drop right into it. So I've done videos on how to put together a uh, How to put it together on Ender 3. See if I can find it. Uh, this isn't it, but this is pretty close. Oh, Project R3, $100, thank you, appreciate it. Uh, Project R3D, uh, they are the Daedalus guys. Uh, they make an awesome printer. If you are looking for a beast of a printer that you don't have to put together, the Daedalus is a monster, like it, in more ways than one. It's a great printer, Core XY, uh, out of the box. You, you take it out of the box, you set it up and you go. It's a great machine. So make sure you check them out because they're friends of the channel and they make good shit. So anyone who makes a good printer, I like. 3D printing and painting, just found out about the channel. Welcome. Hope you enjoy the content. I do a stream every Saturday night. I try to be doing something because I'm down here working on stuff anyway, so I figure I might as well stream it. So we have the M4 extruder. This is just going to replace, go where the stock extruder on an Ender 3 goes. So not a big difference there. But when it comes to the, uh, the hot end assembly, I'm not putting this stock thingy on. I don't like it. So I got to unhook the motor. And hope that. Now, which fan is what? So my part fan is yellow and blue. Yeah. Let me write this down. I don't want to get my colors mixed up. Okay, so my part fan, right, is blue is positive, yellow is negative, okay, and then that one is just red, yeah, red to red, black to black, okay. So I did spend some more time with this extruder trying to get it to work, by the way, um, off stream, because I know we did the two streams on it. And I said I wanted to support your projects. One way or another, you will be supported. <laughs> oh, thanks. Um, if you if you want to fly to Shenzhen and pick up everything I need for uh, Toasty Boy, um, an unnamed uh, CNC project, so I don't have to wait on shipping, that would be much appreciated. Because that's uh, that's what's holding me back right now from a lot of stuff. Shipping. Pen and paper, what is this? I like pen and paper because I keep a notepad and uh, that way I don't have to have the computer on. I don't, I could just pull up my notepad and check it. Uh, don't tell me the screw is stripped. 
No, it is not, but it is jammed already. So yeah, so I spent more time playing around with the uh, this guy here, and you know what? I just did not like it. If maybe if they fix some of the, they said they're gonna send me an updated one. I hope they do, cause I I have nothing against the form factor of this thing. I'm not a huge fan of this style of all-in-one assembly, but uh, it does work. But you know what? Screw it. I'll just leave it together. I'll just use all new stuff. Yeah, I keep a uh, notepad on me at work too. Okay, let's put that aside there. Okay, so I gotta fish out the wire for my motor. So this cable sleeving that I'm using here, I like it cause it's, you can open it. So it's like semi-permanent. So if you gotta pull a wire out, pull the wire out. There we go. Elite Machine Works, thank you for coming a member. So this guy should just mount on camera. Right camera. Right there. So I'm gonna have to drop some screws through it and get some nuts it looks like. But it just drops right on. Do I have some M3 nuts? I'm running low on M3 nuts. I got all my stuff is ordered for uh, Toasty Boy. And one of those orders is a whole bunch of uh, screws and whatnot. I'm actually, because I wanted to check it out, I did order a kit of all the screws from AliExpress. So it's all the screws for actually a V2, but I got enough extra ones. So. Consider buying a used CNC mill. For 5K, you can get something. Uh, Alvaro, the problem is I live in Canacant. So up here in the uh, the great white north of Canada, shipping is outrageous and we just can't find stuff. We just don't have stuff. And when you do, it's massively overpriced and you're not getting it for a good price. So believe me, I have looked for quite a while on the local used market and whatnot to try and find a CNC or a bridge port or whatever. Um, there, there's nothing. The stuff that shows up is literally like 3018s, like the, the, the AliExpress 3018 special or other really crappy styles of uh, like eBay CNCs. And uh, I don't have two phase or three phase power, so I can't just grab an old bridge port and I don't have the ability to put it anywhere either. So unfortunately, I can't just do that. I would love to. Uh, Josh, thank you for becoming a member. Because believe me, I would love to have a, a, like a legit mill. Let's see if I can get Fusion to open today. But I'll show you the, uh, the, for those that are unaware, um, as an exercise in teaching myself Fusion 360, I have been designing a, uh, a CNC for the past couple weeks. So, I don't really have a name for it. I have a project name for it, but I don't have a name for it. BFD for Bridgeport. Yeah, you could do that. Problem is, like, I just don't have the setup for it, unfortunately. Like, I, I already got to go through my garage. I'm sure my neighbors would love that if I suddenly start milling in the garage at night. Does the Canadian government auction off old equipment? They do. The problem is I live like far away from everything else in Canada. I live as far south as you can go in Canada. So like everything's like a several hour drive away and I don't have a way of getting things. I drive a Focus, man. So by the time you factor in shipping or 
rental and whatnot, it just kills a lot of the price. Okay, yeah, I used to live in Chatham. That's like 45 minutes away from me. Got to become friends with AVE. He's out on the, uh... He's out on the other side of the country, I believe. I think he's off in the Vancouver area. I know he's French, but I don't think he's in Quebec. Okay. It's actually a really easy install. So for this setup, um, all it is is a M4 extruder and it's mounted sideways. Um, filament goes in the side here, comes out this side and it feeds right over. So I'll, I'll get a closer view once it's all assembled. So this shouldn't be too bad. So that is that. Yeah, he's out in BC, yeah. So I can actually squeeze this into here. So make sure I got enough travel here. So this travels all the way up. I can squeeze that under there. Now I'm going to have all this extra wire because this is so I can switch between a, uh, I can plug in a, ah, dang it. I have the wrong plug on it. I'm going to have to put a new plug on this. The female to female connections don't work. Yeah, AV is from Canada. He's from British Columbia. I want more details on the nozzle wrench. Uh, go on Thingiverse, search nozzle wrench, or search torque wrench, and this is like the first response. And then just print off whatever one for the desired torque in whatever plastic you use. Ender 3 Pro running Big Tree Tech Mini E3. Stepper noise whenever extruder retracts. Can't figure it out why. Uh, you might be in stealth chop mode. You might be in spread cycle mode. You might not have the right current. Or you might be trying to push it too hard. I would go through that in that order. Yeah, the, the crappy plastic extruder. Yeah, this guy. This is the worst design of an extruder ever. This is so basic. Like... They give you this fancy non-touch color LCD screen that I immediately ripped off of it. Um, but they, they can't put at least a dual drive gear extruder. Like, I don't care about it being uh, the fact that it's direct direct drive. I, I'm not a huge fan of direct drive because the heat from the motor can work its way into the drive gear into the filament. Um, so I like either geared or belted. But at least make it dual drive. Come on, guys. It's the future. I gotta strip the wires first. So I'm hoping this isn't gonna take too long. We're gonna get it up and printing. And then some stuff did come in for Toasty Boy, so I'll go over that. And then, uh, uh, maybe we'll chat about the CNC project later too. Uh, 
And I chopped the hot end off my Ender 3 V2 for a BMG wind, and they didn't give me enough wires. Yeah, the, the stock wiring loom for this is pretty much like no extra uh, wire. So if you run out, you pretty much got to run all new. I, I ran all new. So right now, my uh, the wiring on my Ender from the hot end to the uh, the new controller board in there, I have the rep uh, the Mellow Fly RF E3. Um, is the one I have in there right now. So I have a whole new wiring loom going all the way down. Because one, they, they soldered their wires, and two, now I got like silicone and proper wire. I do have PTFE wire on the way for the Toasty Boy build. So I'll be doing that all in PTFE. Uh, you're late to the party. Eh, you're not too much. All I did was bolt on an M4. So I have a Voron M4 extruder here. I'm just, uh, putting the connector on it. And then we are going to, we're going to build a hot end out of like five different hot ends worth of components. Because I really don't like the stock setup on this thing. And I, I didn't go and print a, a new mount. So we're going to use some, one piece of the original and then the rest is going to be, uh, new. So let's see. So let's see, what are my colors here? Blue. again what is blue red green black right blue red green black yep Okay, throw a zip tie on that. Okay, so now we got the M4 uh, bolted on. So the filament will feed in. I got a little dummy piece of PTFE somewhere. Where did I put it? Yeah, that'll do. Adding a longer piece. I'll get that later. So the filament will feed in like it does on a traditional... Uh, there. Now this wire is going to be long. Uh, simply for the fact that I... Uh, I want to keep this wire long in case I put another direct feed back on this in the future for testing and whatnot. But it pretty much is an M4 extruder. You've seen these before. I have them on the uh, the switch wire runs two of them. This guy. So let's figure out a hot end. Are you printing all Toasty Boy parts in CF Nylon? Yes. I'm going to try CF Nylon right off the bat. If not, I'm going to do ASA and then switch to CF Nylon afterwards. But uh, I have some CF Nylon and I actually have some CF uh, polycarbonate. So this is the kind of material that Toasty Boy is going to be meant for. Um, I have two enclosed Vorons, right? I got I got my uh, V226 and I got Tall, tall Boy. Um, V226 should have no problem printing, like, the, it's a boron, it's an enclosed printer. It should have no problem printing it. The problem is, I don't want to have to go in there and switch out to a hardened nozzle every time I print something abrasive. Um, it's built well, but it's not really, it doesn't have high temperature belts. Uh, the heated heater mat isn't RTV to the bottom of the plate, for example. So, Toasty Boy is just going to be dedicated to 
fancy stuff. That's what I'm building it for. And it's gonna be able to hopefully get higher chamber temperatures to give me stronger prints because uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun with ABS once you know how to do it properly. And once you have the ability to do it properly. Uh, where did I get the PTFE wire? I, I went with China. I, I'm trying China wire. Um, somebody linked it to me a while back and I've been saving it. So if it's good, I'll share the link. If it's Garbo, I won't share it. Uh, what happened to the Voron Live? Still no news? Uh, correct. Uh, basically, there's I'm trying to figure out what to announce and how because there's really not much. It's more a recap. Um, it's not like last year's early year Voron Live where it was like, hey guys, we designed three new printers. Here you go. It was more of a, this one was meant to be more of a recap and they just got to figure it out. I'm not involved with Voron Live. That's not me. So. So let's see what we got here. Yeah, nope, wrong camera. Wrong camera. Right camera. So, this is kind of what I'm thinking. Let me pull this out. So this is the stock um, hot end assembly for this guy. We got our heat sink. We got the heat brake, which is just stainless steel, hollow, so the PTFE tube goes all the way in it. I don't like it, okay? I want my I want my full metal hot end, okay? I want a pretty ABS, I don't like this. You know the PTFE goes to there, but the it's pretty thick, so the heat will rise up. So I don't like this. And I don't like this nozzle. It's a Garbo nozzle. So, we're gonna keep this guy, okay? Because I don't wanna go and print a whole mount to put a V6 on it, and you've seen a bunch of V6, so we're gonna have fun. This is titanium. This is a titanium chimera heat break. Now, as you can see, it's a little bit shorter, but if you watched uh, Stefan's video recently, or Stefan, uh, he did a video on putting bimetallic heat breaks in these, and he had an aftermarket one that was shorter, and it, hey, it still works just fine. So all you have to do is put it in and index it. So we're gonna go with that. Also, uh, I'm going to put a V6 heater block on it because I have a bunch of these. So we're going to use that. We're going to use a silicone sock. We're going to use a plated copper nozzle. And then where is it? One of those guys, an NTC 100K. And uh, let's throw a 50 watt heater in it. Sure, why not? So that's what we're gonna put in this guy. So, um, I gotta find a screw for this. Do I have any little screws for this? Okay, that'll work. And then I need a set screw. Yes, I'm stealing set screws out of uh, MXL gears. That'll work. There we go. Okay, let me catch up on chat here. Uh, for the China PTFE wire, test the bending. The The stuff I have was recommended by somebody I know, so we'll see how it works. Um, if it's good, I'll let you know. If it's not Garbo, I won't. Uh, 
Oh yeah, I'm not, Toasty Boy is not doing peak, by the way. We are not pushing it that far. Um, I ran around Windsor, can't find silicone wire or PTFE. Yep, yeah, you gotta buy it online, man. There's, we got nothing in our area. Our Home Depot sucks. Like, there, there's nothing. Uh, you can try Electrozode, Electrozode, Electrozad, Electrozode on Jefferson, maybe? That would be the only place I could think of locally. Um, so. Can I turn the tunes up? Sure. Uh, Deep Park, thank you for coming, remember. There you go. Turn it up a bit. Okay. So let's put this together. Wrong camera. Wrong camera. Eh, we'll go with this camera. Let's go with this camera. So they have it here. So we got our... It's been a while since I put a V6 block together. So you put the nozzle in almost all the way, or all the way. You back it off, what, like a quarter turn? Half turn? I can't remember. Oh, I got some gunk on it. Let me clean it off. That's just PTFE or uh, PLA, yeah. I just want to make sure it seals properly when I torque it. There we go. After, yeah, there you go. Honestly, it. You just gotta make sure it's not tight all the way so that when you go to actually tighten the nozzle, the nozzle seals against the heat break. Remember, the nozzle doesn't seal on the threads. I see people like, when their nozzle leaks, they go for like the PTFE, um, um, the Teflon tape. Don't do that. Don't do that. Your, your nozzle seals on the flat part of your heat break. Not the, uh, not the threads. If the, if it was supposed to seal on the threads, they would be tapped threaded, or they would be threaded, um, they would be tapered. So it'd be like an MPT um, threading, not, you know, M7 or M6 or whatever it is, or M8. Okay. So we have that. Now I gotta figure out how to mount this. So I'm wondering if I can, which way, I'm just trying to figure out which way I got to put the, uh, the block. Okay, so that goes like that. So, okay, so the block's got to be going forward. So I can't have, I gotta have the block going forward. And then because there is a gap, obviously I can't push it up all the way. So I'm just gonna index it to eh, roughly flush with the bottom and then tighten the set screw. But actually before I do that, um, I know I have some somewhere. I'm gonna put some thermal compound on it. Yeah, let's go with some, uh, Cryo rig CP7. It's just uh, thermal paste, like CPU thermal paste. So while there will be a little bit of a gap, it shouldn't be that big of an issue because the PTFE uh, will come down to it. So it shouldn't be that big of a deal that there is a gap. You just got to make sure that your PTFE is uh, seated properly and you don't have that gap because the Locking um, Bowden connector will keep it from moving up and down. So it shouldn't be that bad. Okay, just enough.
Robert, thank you for becoming a member. I don't know why that uh, cut off there. I gotta go through. I finally signed up for uh, uh, what you might call it. The uh, Dream Labs, I think it is. I actually like properly signed up for it. So we might have an issue here because this is actually pretty low. But we should be okay as long as that nozzle is below the wheel, which it is. So we should be okay. But I could just move the Z end stop. That's not a big deal. Uh, it's been 30 minutes since 03P's last shell. Uh, have I talked to you guys about Raid Shadow Legends today? Man, is it a great game. I'm on my phone all the time. Okay, God. Even, I think I almost threw up there. Um, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, that was too much. That was too much. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. But you know what? Thangs has been... We've chatted, and I, you know... I'm happy to call them a sponsor. They like the content I create here. They want to see me do more. And with their sponsorship, they're allowing me to do a lot more than I would normally be able to do. So, I do appreciate them sponsoring the channel and the content I create. But even more than that, I appreciate you guys. Everyone who's a channel member, or is on the Patreon, or donates during the stream, you guys are all awesome. Super awesome. Because I would not be able to do any of this stuff without you. Well, I would, but we would still be in the other room. Um, I wouldn't be building Toasty Boy, and we'd still be on my Logitech C920 with internal audio, for one. So everything you guys have donated to the stream has gone back into the stream or stuff for the stream. So this isn't my job. So it all it all feeds back to you guys, trust me. No. If things keep going good, maybe it will be my job one day, but it's not this day. So we got our little toasty sock on. So I'm going full Ender 3 here. And I went and printed off this big old monolithic hunk of plastic. I found it on Thingiverse fan shroud assembly that we're gonna put together. Because why not? If you're gonna go, go big, go big. So where is my fan? 24 volt, yep. So actually, I gotta put some heat sets in here, guys. Let me get my soldering iron. Yeah. I thought this didn't need heat sets. Guess I was wrong. Can we get some only Benchies STLs? I only Benchies only directs to uh, my YouTube account. I need to set up an actual site one day. Drop the 200 degree soldering iron. Ding dings. I have yet to print a ding ding. Maybe one day I will. Oh God, okay. It's a good thing. Um, this needs heat sets because I didn't realize how low I was getting on heat sets. And uh, that's all I got left. I ordered like a hundred of these, like, I can't remember when. The last like thing I needed a lot of heat sets for, I ordered for, but these are the la large ones we don't use. This is back from before the design change. Oh my God, I'm going through those quick. The same as YouTube buddy. I think that's what, uh, what's his name calls him. Um, I can't remember what his name is on YouTube. Not Peter Shreeple. Oh. 
Michael Reeves, that's what it is. Yeah, he calls them YouTube buddies for uh, s sponsorship, censorship reasons or whatever. Can't swear you don't get that ad revenue. And what material did you print that mount? Oh, ABS. Like, yes, it's going on an Ender 3, but I'm not going to print it in PLA. Like, I have ABS-capable machines. <laughs> Plus, I don't have a lot of PLA for this kind of stuff. I have, like, fancier stuff I want to save for, like, prints. Like, what PLA is good for. I don't want to use a fancy color on generic Ender 3 mount that might not even work. So... So this fan goes on like that. I don't know. I have, I lost my scale. Super annoying. Oh yeah, we, we Ender 3 now, boys. So that goes in there. It would come up like that. And that just kind of goes over top. Oh, these go up there, like that. And that goes over there. It's actually not a bad design, actually. And I got a height adjustment too, so I can I can adjust it for the, uh, the fan location. That's actually not bad. This isn't a bad setup, I will say. It's absolutely monolithic and huge. But it works. So hey, it works. Uh, you didn't feel the need to go to Dual Z on the Ender 3? Not yet. Um, maybe one day, but not this day. Ooh, uh, Brennan Ish, $5. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Uh, just got here. What's the plan for tonight? Cheers. The cheers is where we took the BIQH2 off of it because I need this to actually print. And then we're going to get it up in printing and we're going to print something. And then we're going to go over some plans for future projects and whatnot. I got to put a nut on that. What fan setup is that? I found it on Thingiverse. I searched Ender 3 V2 uh, 5015 fan mount. And this was the first result and I printed it. I have no idea how good it is. There was one comment on it that said it worked great. So we're going to roll with it. Because it's an Ender 3, that's how people mod their Ender 3. They just see what everyone else has on it, and that's what they put on theirs. Regardless if it needs it or not. Uh, what extruder? It is a M4, a Voron M4 extruder. Bad screw. That's why that screw wasn't in the right container. Okay. 
There we go. Ah, uh, printing a bullseye. I have no idea any of like the common Ender 3 mods and whatnot. I literally just searched for it. And this was the first that came up, so I said, hey, let's roll with it. So, so I like this one because it's got height adjust. So I can adjust it because I'm running a um, non-conventional nozzle location, I guess you would say. Let me bring it down so you can see. And I guess that works. We can always drop it once we get it homed and whatnot. Uh, why would you put the extruder on a moving gantry rather than on the frame? Um, because I'm using the original mount location. So this way the Bowden is as short as possible. Um, yeah, uh, you, you do want to try and keep the Bowden short. Now, where it is is pretty much attached to where, where the lead screw is at. So yes, there's added mass, but it's not like it's tilting it. So it shouldn't be that big of an issue. Um, We'll see. Personally, I'd rather go a direct drive route, but I can't. Uh, Fish FPV, 10 Canadian. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Okay, let's hook some fans up. It's crimping time. Got my IRS check, thinking of building a, a Voron 2.4. There you go. You should use the Hang Tight Series Creality tool heads. They are beautifully designed and have a lots of configurations options. Always recommend them to whoever is modding their Creality machine. I'll keep that in mind. Um, this hopefully won't be like a permanent setup. Like I got the Ender 3 um, specifically to do Ender 3 things on it and test stuff that's common with Ender 3s like controller boards and whatnot that people use on their Ender 3s. Um, just because of pretty much every other printer I have is a Voron, I want something that's not a Voron because not everyone has Vorons, right? Ender 3s are super common, so I wanted a common printer essentially. Uh, uh, Chris, $5, thank you man, appreciate it. Keep the clipper vids coming, my Ender 3 is printing ABS like a beast now, awesome. Um, I'm hoping this week to do the next um, input shaper video, like how to properly find out what accelerations you can run and whatnot. I actually, for those that, like, because a bunch of people have brought it up to me, I kept that video simple um, for a reason. Like, there are things, like, it, you can auto-tune pressure advance, and it tells you a suggested uh, input shaper level and type to run during that initial accelerometer query. But I didn't go over that uh, for two reasons. One, it's not always the best option. It really depends on your printer. The method I said where go like MZV and use, you know, whatever height is the peak or whatever peaks the highest is usually the good for all printers option. But there's a lot more to it. And now in the next video, you know how clip or how input shaper works. So I don't have to go through all that. So we can dive right into it. That video was basically the quick down and dirty, let's get it running video so that we can go into more advanced stuff later on and not have to cover the basics. So. Oh, and by the way, tax advice. Um, I don't know how it is in the States, but up here in Canada, um, if your tax refund is enough to buy a Voron, you're doing your taxes wrong. You don't want to be getting a lot of money back from the government when you do your taxes. 
Because what that means is you overpaid on your taxes and you gave the government an interest-free loan for a year. So instead of you using that money over the past year to invest or buy shiny things, you basically do the equivalent of burying it in your backyard for a year and then digging it up. So you really don't want to get a tax refund or at least a big one. I don't know, that's what I've always been told. Euro tax tips. Yep. If you need the tech tips, shop LTT store. That's where you get the tech tips. This is tax tips. Okay, so I need to put those connectors on. You get interest on your tax returns? No. Oh. I don't think we do up here. I've never actually looked into it. I I, I pay the thirty dollars to get my turbo tax, and I, I do it at home, and that's it. <laughs> I'm lucky enough where I get like a couple hundred back if I'm lucky. Joys of having a kid: so much you can write off. Yeah, I guess it would depend on a lot of this, like what state you're in. So the plan is to get this hooked up, get our extruder calibrated, do a PID tune, which by the way, the PID tune for the hot end does not take an hour, unlike the bed. So I only have to do the PID tune for the, the hot end, which should only take a couple minutes. And then we will get this thing printing something. I'd rather owe money than stick money in the, yeah, that's pretty much what I do. I, I usually, for the longest time, I would owe like, 100, 200, or whatever. Um, but lately I've been investing a bit more in retirement and whatnot. You know how it is. Plus, you could write so much off with a kid, it's great. We have 275 people. I don't know how we have 275 people. Hello, everyone. How are you all doing tonight? If this is your first stream, make sure you're subscribed. Like the smash button and all that jazz. Somehow we, we have almost 300 people watching me talk about taxes while I crimp a hot end on. We're going to have a fun time between now and Toasty Boy. What do you guys want to see for Toasty Boy? Do you want me to kind of wait till everything is in and then tackle it all at once? Like how I did it like the, the, the previous build series with the, you know, the, the V0 and the V2 and the switch wire where it was just one big block over like a month and a half, two months where every Saturday I work on it for a bit. Or would you rather kind of as stuff comes in do as much as we can, and then when we run out of stuff to do, go on to a variety, or do it that way. But I got a feeling like certain things like the frame might come in before um, other stuff like, you know, knowing my luck, rails won't show up till last week or something stupid like that. Uh, first option. Yeah, wait till it all shows up and do a big block. Thirty-six. I don't think it would take thirty-six. 
I do have space. Um, this shelf right here, the whole bottom is open. So I can easily put printers down there. So that's it. Space isn't really an issue in this room. Um, all at once, step by step. Yeah, multiple part. I think that's what I'll do. I'll just, you know, once stuff comes in, because here's the thing. I can, I can build one of these in a weekend. I, I've done a full build of a V2 in a weekend. Like, it, it doesn't take me that long. So if we're doing, you know, three, three and a half, four hours a week of a build, you know, if once I start with the frame and say, you know, my um, something for the extruder hasn't come in yet, we won't be touching that for like another month. So. So we might be okay. It might not be that big of an issue. I know people are suggesting it. I have kind of thought of the idea of doing a a one and done stream where like a Saturday morning, I, I wake up, um, I come down here, I turn the stream on and we just go. And I keep going until it's pushing plastic. I kind of like that idea because it's kind of cool. Um, obviously, I would do prep work beforehand. The wiring loom would be pre-completed. Because um, I'm not going to spend six hours of a 24-hour stream crimping wires. Um, so the wiring loom would be pre-completed. Um, the controller boards would be flashed with the firmware, that kind of thing. Now the only downside to that, well, there there are multiple downsides. Um, the wifey might not appreciate it. <laughs> hey, hon, take the kid all weekend. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta stream a printer build. And two, that's like two months of content for streams that I won't be able to use because I did it all at once. Uh, Forty-eight hours build stream. I. I I don't think I could stretch it out for 48 hours. Yeah, and most people won't be able to watch a full day stream. I don't know. Well, pro uh, honestly, I'll probably end up doing like I did with the previous ones where I do a little bit each week until it's done. Because then too, I can section it off. So people are more likely to watch it in hindsight. Um, after the fact, Cause then they can go, oh, hey, I'm building one. How do I put this part together? And you go to the live stream where I put that part together instead of trying to scrub through a, an 18 hour stream. So maybe one day in the future, I'll, I'll figure out something to do. Something for a full day stream, but we'll see. Like the CNC stuff, the CNC stuff will not be covered on streams a lot. Uh, simply for the fact that building a CNC is a lot more finicky than um, a 3D printer. And it's a lot of just sitting there and like tweaking, like tweaking adjustments and shimming and whatnot. Um, and it will take place over a long time. So the, the CNC will be, um, the CNC will be videos for the most part. John Clark. Uh, Ooh, I missed it. I missed it. I missed it. 150. Wow. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Here's round 100 for all those extra toasty boy and 50 for your little guy. Buy something for his B-Day. He is getting so many toys. Um, Nana is spoiling the hell out of him. Thank you very much, man. Appreciate it. You are awesome. Uh, and you're around all the time. So I hope you're enjoying these videos. You guys are awesome. Okay, so let's see, part fan. Where's my part fan? So this is my part fan. So blue is positive, which is red. And black is negative, which is yellow. Okay. Cooling fan, red is red. And black goes to black. Yep, so that. So 
hooks up there. Adam, thank you for coming a member. That goes there. That goes there. Okay, I should have put more sleeving on this. Okay, so now I gotta zip tie this all together. Hour 42 still waiting for the PID tuning. <laughs> well, it would be running Clipper, which doesn't take, you know, um, the life cycle of small insects to do a TI in terms of time to do a PID tune. So we'd be okay there. Using a cut zip tie. Uh, there we go. Fresh zip tie. Would you ever make merch if your channel gets enough subscribers? I'd like an only Benji shirt or hoodie. The problem is if I try to do merch with that. Um, so the only Benji, I can't remember. If anyone actually remembers how the only Benji's joke started, I, I, I think. Like I made the joke or somebody in chat made the joke that, you know, people only print benchies on their on their printers and then it just kind of spiraled into only benchies, um, which for those that are uh, 12 years old is a joke on uh, only fans. But uh, Nemgria ended up hooking me up with the, the logo, which he like laser cut or however he did it. So that is ballin'. But the problem is having some random prop in the background of a stream is fine, but I'm sure if I tried to like sell shirts with that logo, um, I'd get sued, I think. I'm not 100% sure. So we would have to change it, I think. But in terms of merch, um, I maybe one day, I think at like 10,000 subs, I get, a, I get a store on YouTube or something like that. Like I get a free Teespring store or something they give me, I, I don't know. Um, that's coming up a lot quicker than I thought it would ever be, but. So let's see here. Let's get this guy working. So we should be good now. Um, I got that hooked up. Let me get a little bit more sleeving just to kind of stiffen this part up. Parody logo is fine. I need a, a mascot named Sparky. Okay, here's the funny thing. Like, I was realizing this like when I was watching like other YouTubers and whatnot. I, I never say my name on stream. Like, the channel's called Nero3DP, but that's because my YouTube channel's like older than some kids I know um, that have kids, probably. Um, from like 2006 and that's like when I played World of Warcraft and I just added the 3DP part after because uh, I, I did 3D printing videos. So the channel's called that because that's what it is. Um, I originally wanted 3DP Nero uh, but the problem is I felt that would kind of infringe on Joel a little bit because he's 3D printing nerd. Um, so then there would be two 3DP ends, and I didn't like that. I didn't want to encroach on him. Um, so that's why it's Nero 3DP. Or, yeah. But, like, I don't have... My shows don't have a name. Like, this stream still doesn't have a name. I don't know what we call this stream. It, it's just the Saturday night stream. Um... I don't have, like, I got no names for anything. I just kind of hit record and that's what happens. So. Maybe one day I'll figure out a name for all this, but not this day. Okay, I can live with that. Uh, let's turn it on. Find a power cord.
Bob. His name's Bob. <laughs> okay, contact. Three Nero DP. I, I was gonna actually. Th I was thinking of doing a shirt called that. Because everyone jokes on that, saying three Nero DP. Shirt with a cartoon Nero throwing filament over his shoulder. <laughs> if somebody wants to draw anything, go right ahead, man. Where's the doggo? Let's see what the dog. If the doggo's here. Um, Oh yeah, that's right. That's the fan in there. I'm like, why do I hear a fan? Coda. No. No doggo. No doggo. Sorry. Okay, let me uh, home this guy. I really don't like V-wheels, by the way. So I'm probably going to have to adjust um, a bunch of stuff. So let's find out. Let me actually connect to this printer. I'm sorry, John. If my wife's still up, he hangs upstairs. That's the thing. Like he, he's a mama's boy dog. So, uh, try again. my crappy home Wi-Fi, do your thing. So if my wife's up, he's still upstairs because he's a mama's boy. David's here. Hello, David. How are you doing tonight, man? Can you make some new tensioner knobs? I could. Like all it is is just printed with a uh, a heat set insert in it. Probably wouldn't be too hard. We're waiting on it to load up. There we go. Ah, uh, rep wrap firmware. It's been so long. Okay, home all. Okay, let's see um, how off my Z is. We're off by a lot, holy hell. Okay, I gotta drop this, big time. Go with the Unify network. I know, I know, people keep saying I gotta upgrade my Wi-Fi. I gotta upgrade the, the Wi-Fi. Uh, when will you do the interview with Fuga Tech 3D Printing? He seems smitten with you. <laughs> I, uh... I might... I'm, I'm tempted to maybe inter do, like, a live show at some point. Um... We'll see. I know Max, um, Russian Cat Food, for those that don't know. Um, I think he's down with it. So I might do a live show at some point. Or at least try to do a live show at some point. Um... We'll see. We'll see how long it takes for everything to show up from AliExpress for the builds. <laughs> uh, Tuba T, $20. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. And for those that don't know, David is uh, the CEO, El Presidente, and overlord of Printed Solid. So if you need stuff from Printed Solid, he's your man. Okay, I can't go any lower. So I gotta actually modify the end stop. Fun times. I have a better camera for this. Uh, 
On the switch wire, did you connect the hot end fan on a PWM output like HE or just on a regular fan? I'm just wondering as I currently finishing wire my... I, my switch wire is on a, remember I have an SKR 1.3 in mind. I'm not running the, uh, the E3 or whatever the stock board is, but yes, I have my, my hot end fan and my part fan are on, um, MOSFET controlled output. So they, they turn on and off on command. My, uh, controller fan. So the fans that I have for underneath are, um, I can't remember what they're called. Arctic Silver, I think, or something. They're um, they're quiet computer fans, so they're always on when the printer is on. So. so let's see. So this end stuff, I can't drop it any lower. Um, so I'm just going to cut off the little thing that won't let me drop it any lower, and we're going to drop it lower. because uh, the setup we're running right now is probably a little bit shorter than the stock setup on an Ender 3. Well, it is it is shorter because I'm having to cut the end stop down. Okay, let's see here. Okay, that works. So, let me turn my motors off. Um, how do I turn my motors off? In, um, E stop. That turns the motors off. Okay, manually adjust to the nozzle touches the bed. Okay. And then move up until you hear the click. And we should be there. this again. Z offsetting. Actually, that's right. Okay, we're good. Okay. So I think we're good there. We do have to move this up a little bit because we are dragging on the bed. And uh, having something dragging on your bed while you're printing is probably not a great thing. So let's just shift this baby up a little bit. I don't even know how good this fan is. Yeah, it works pretty good. You know what? This giant monolithic fan shroud thing actually does work pretty good, I will say. Uh, you hear the fans. Yeah, the, the only fan that's running is the controller fan underneath. Sorry, guys. Here, let me... Uh, properties. Oh, where is it? Filters. There we go. Okay, I put the uh, the noise reduction on. I should have turned that on earlier, I guess. So I got the noise reduction on. Come on. So we're good. And then what we're gonna do? We're gonna do our little PID tune, and uh, should be good to go.
How did you connect the hot end wires? Can you elaborate on it? Um, if you're talking about, okay, on this, so how I did it is I have the, uh, the wires are coming out and then I have Molex Microfit 3 connectors on it. Okay, so for my hot ends, how I do it, I use a four pin connector. So I have the, the two outer wires are the heater and the two inner wires are the thermistor. And it's just a, a Molex Microfit connector. And then it just connects to the wires that go down. I, I do that on my printers that I expect to swap stuff out on every now and then. So like all my Vorons, for example, have uh, connectors near the tool head. This way, if you need to swap anything out, you don't have to open up the bottom compartment. That way you, you just swap the, the plug and you're done. Yeah, Duff, the noise reduction, I, I used to use it a bit and then I turned it off, but then I started playing music because the problem with the noise reduction is it kills all noise and it sounds really weird when I, when I cut back in and out. But I guess now that I play music all the time, um, it, it works better, I guess. Okay. So now we got to get some plastic in here, I guess. Uh, what color you guys want? Need to print something. I got red, green, blue, white, uh, and the fancy multicolor. But since we're not going to print something big, eh, let's go with red. I think we'll go with red. At least for now, I got to do a PID, or I got to calibrate my E-steps anyway, so let's swap it out. Oh, you are not lined up at all. I gotta fix that. Shoot. There we go. How did you move? One second, I just gotta adjust the uh, extruder here. Decided to not be lined up. There we go. Okay. Unicorn vomit. Sparta 3D black. I don't have any Sparta 3D filament. Um, you got their sticker now, though. Uh, would printing the STL model on the rubber feet and TPU work? Not sure if anyone tried it. Uh, Rui, if you go to the Voron switch wire, or no, that's only for the Voron switch wire. The Voron switch wire has printable TPU feet, but yeah, just print uh, a cube basically and use that as your foot. So. Okay, how did you, okay, this is, okay, I'm gonna date myself now. Uh, RepRap firmware G-code. How do you cold extrude with uh, RepRap firmware? Cold extrude. I know there's a G-code command. Um, M302, I think? 
Okay, M302, right? M302, send. Okay, and then I should be able to extrude 100 millimeters, right? No, or is it P0? M302 P1, okay. 302 P1, okay, send. Okay, won't let me extrude. Uh, right, actually. P1 E100 F300? Send. Uh, no tool selected. There is only the one tool. Uh, system. Yeah, tools. See if tool. I got tool right there. Set initial tool zero active and standby temperature zero C. So it is called. Now here's the thing. I can always just heat it up and do it because I was able to do this before. So we'll just heat it up. So I got to rep rep firmware. Um, PID two because I got a PID two in the hot end anyway. So we got to get it hot anyways. What is my So this doesn't take, apparently, the life cycle of a small insect to do. So we'll let that do its thing. There we go. Temperature's going up. So we got to let that do its thing. Hot and fans on. So we're good there. So what mods have been done so far? Um, so as it is right now, we are running uh, an M a Voron M4 extruder. So let me pull it up here. So for an extruder, we're running this, the Voron M4. Um, manual here. Where did I put it? So here's the manual for it. It's a belted extruder, uh, four to one gearing. Uh, it uses dual drive Bontech style gears. Um, and it's a Bowden setup. So we have that installed on the back of it, replacing the absolutely craptacular, craptastic stock Ender 3 extruder. So we have that. And then we have a new um, hot end fan shroud assembly, I guess. It has a 5010 blower or 50, uh, a 5015 blower. And then also we have, um, uh, what else? Oh, the hot end itself. We swapped out the heat brake for a titanium heat brake, a triangle lapse titanium chimera heat brake, and a V6 with a 50 watt heater and a new shoot. I got to cancel this. I forgot we switched out the bed thermistor or this thermistor, so it's not reading right. Is that a pet's fang? I uh, no, it's some whatever the result came up when I searched Ender 3 V2 and it was like printed like 20 times. Okay. Yep. 
I forgot I have to reset. I gotta go into the uh, adjust the thermistor because I think before I had a beta 3950 and now I have a NTC 100K. So system, uh, config G, so let's see here, what's the small printer in the back with orange extruder? Um, the orange hot end is a Voron V0, this guy is a Voron V0. Uh, here's thermistor, so we air that, so um, M8. So what are the thermistor types? Is there a list of the thermistor types? It's an NTC 100K. Do I just put NTC 100K? Does it know that? Oops. What's the main? Oh, the main board is a R. Uh, uh, a mellow fly or fly mellow rep rep firmware E3 with the built in uh, Wi Fi. I guess it is just the 1000. Yeah, the 1000. No, it's not the stock under three, it's an NTC 100K. Oh, it's a beta 3950. There we go. Beta 3950. Beta 3950. There we go. I should have read the whole title on the bag. Save. Restart board. And actually, shoot, while I'm in here. What is the stock, um... Stock E-steps for an M4. I want to say it's like 4-something, right? Big G. It's like 475, isn't it? Fans, heaters, axis, drives. Do we not have that in the manual? 415? 415, yeah. Nope, not rotation distance. This is this is rep wrap from where we're running on this board, not clipper. 415. Save. Okay. Yes, save. Yeah, we're doing steps per millimeter. It's a duet. Okay, now I can run my... So while that is doing that... Full step, can't lose. Send it. Uh, let's see here. Let me get the PID tune going. Oh yeah, M303. I don't remember what any of the G code is for Duet. 200, there we go. Okay, send. Okay, so it's redoing that. What wireless mic? Um, the kind of wireless mic that requires a cable. It's a like $20, um, 
Boya. B O Y A. Boya. Mike. It, it's not wireless. I I do have a Rode Wireless Go in my uh, wish list, and uh, I might tell the wife to get that for me for my birthday or something. Um, that's like my next purchase for the stream probably will be a wireless mic. This one actually isn't working out too bad, although I'm finding I'm starting to get static on it. Um, if I'm just standing still and I'm not talking, you you hear static. So I'm not, It's I think it's starting to go already. But it was a $20 mic. Cut it, make it go wireless. Yeah, that'll work. Let me see if the dog goes out there. No doggo, I'm sorry. Oh, now it's just doing its thing. So anyways, uh, in the meantime, I do have some stuff from, uh, well, that is, you know what? I'll talk about that after. Um, while we are waiting for this to load though, or to do its thing, why not wired mic on a boomstick? Um, I started off for, if you go back before Christmas, um, my first video on the intro to ABS series, anything before that, that was the last video I recorded on my mic. I used to just have a mic. I got a mic right here. Um, I got a, a Marantz Pod Pro mic, USB mic. This is what I was using uh, before this guy. The problem with that is the audio quality is Garbo. Um, Cause it's, it's echoey. It's very echoey because you have to crank the gain up because I'm walking around the room. Right. It, it sounds great when I'm like directly in front of it and doing voiceover on a video. It sounds fine. But if I'm doing like what I'm doing right now, I have to crank the gain so it can pick me up when I'm around the room and it, it doesn't sound that good. So. Uh, dust boot. Um, I'm going to check it anyways. Once once the PID tune is done. But in the meantime, what I want you guys to do is in the description of the video, uh, click the link, go to Thangs, sign up if you haven't already, create an account, find me something to print because we are going to print something on here once this is done. So go on Thangs, find me something to print and uh, let me know the name of the model that you want me to print and I will print it. But not one that takes like forever. Uh, Nathan, $5. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Jerry from at 3D Printing and Painting has a great mic set up. Um, that, that is one of the things I need to... Um, I, I'm happy with the set, setup now. My my video is pretty good. I, I got the, you know, the overhead cam, the close-up cam. The overhead cam, I need a manual way of, or a remote way of doing this. Because having to do this, the zoom in and out, every time sucks. Um, maybe that'll be a project one day, is design and make a automated system for that. Mike3DP, hello! But yeah, like this camera, I'm happy with this camera a lot. And I think I have enough lighting finally. Um, I need to get some lighting from over here. Because right now, in case you haven't noticed, like I haven't zoomed in quite a bit. But when I zoom out, you can see this corner right here is just dark. I don't have any lights there. What do I have at 26? Yeah, 25. We'll go 25. So yeah. Ender 3 printer. <laughs> I did see that. There's like a full model of an Ender 3 on here. That's still PID2 and still PID2. How fast do you think one can push an artillery genius printer? Um, this was, what, 300 millimeters a second at like 4K Excel or something like that on an Ender 3. Put clipper on it, you can push it as fast as you can melt plastic probably on the printer stock. Uh, what camera? So right now the main camera is a Sony A5100 with the stock lens going into a cam link. Uh, the overhead camera is what used to be my main camera and it's a Canon Vixia R800 going into a $15 knockoff AliExpress cam link. 
And then the mobile camera is a Logitech C920. Yo. Okay, we are done the PID tune. So, tuning complete. Peter needs to follow in command. Press and type M500 to save. M500. Save. Okay. Now we're going to set it to go to 200. Let it heat up. Home all. Doggo. Ooh, let me see if I can find that. Take the camera off just in case. You learn quick not to just type in random links on stream. See, I would print that, but I need support. I don't want to print with support. Okay. German Shepherd Puppy. Let me see if I can find a German Shepherd. There we go. Uh, it's not on things. It's a redirect to my mini factory. Not everything on Thanks. Thanks is also an aggregator site, so it does pull from other sites too. No I'm writing Shepherd. What? Oh, there we go. Thanks. Thangs is Thangs is giving me some advice. Thangs only. There we go. There we go. Yeah, you can adjust the search by from Thangs only. So yes, make sure you guys adjust the search. You gotta find me something on Thangs itself. Okay, let's make sure this extruder actually works. So let me go up a bit. And we are gonna extrude 100 millimeters of filament and see how much we actually get. Okay, uh, we're going backwards. So, system, uh, config G. How do I flip a motor in? I'll flip a motor in. Change motor direction in firmware. Change motor direction. Daft Punk. You know what? Yeah, let's do the Daft Punk helmet. Let's do, um, do you guys want Manuel or Thomas? Let's do Thomas. I like the Thomas helmet. Um, let's see. Can I print one of them in one piece? I know there's one piece model somewhere. Yeah, this one. Okay. We're going to print Thomas. Yeah, we're going to print Thomas. M569. Okay, so M569. Um... Okay, so is that so that would be physical drive through uh that would be drive four, that's my extruder. So I need to put that one and that would go backwards. Save and restart. So I gotta put filament back into this because I 
There we go. There we go. Did I check the extruder calibration? That's what we're doing right now. Get it back on. So yeah, so let me get Cura loaded up here. So we are gonna print this guy. We are gonna print Emmanuel, Emmanuel Hamet. Okay, extrude 100 millimeters, go. Okay, now it's going the right way. I'm probably gonna have to adjust motor current too. Let's see here, system. Actually, 800 milliamps. It should be okay at 800 milliamps. It should be okay. This motor ha should have no problem. Okay, so. So I actually measure 76. We get a bumper E steps up. Or no, 74. 74 millimeters. That can't be right. Go to calculator. And I'm probably going to do it backwards. Five sixty. Yeah, that sounds right. It's five sixty. Yeah, rift. At, I I was so, you have no idea. Like I woke up the one morning, and uh, I'm like, because I'm subscribed to you know Daft Punk on YouTube. I'm pretty sure pretty much everyone is who ever listened to him. And I seen they put out a video, and I'm like, oh yeah, new Daft Punk. And then halfway through the re video, I realized what was going on, and I was like, oh, sad panda. I wish I had some gold filament. Let's try 100 again. Go. I wish I had gold filament. I really did. Got the blue up there. Or no, that's uh, that. Where's my blue at? Did I drop a little filament somewhere? Where's my blue at? I don't know where my blue filament went. Well, we'll print them in red, I guess. There we go, 100 millimeters. Okay. So let's get this red out of here. We're not going to use this red. Oh, there's the blue. There's the blue. Okay. So, we have to now. No, nope, that ain't gonna work. I need to make a longer one of these. We need a Bowden tube to actually connect our extruder to our hot end. So, because we have that gap in there, I'm actually gonna go ahead and chamfer my Bowden tube. Um, if you have a pencil sharpener, it works really good. But basically, I'm taking off the outer edge, so it, it'll sit into the, uh, well, one, it'll be less likely to catch on the lip of the uh, heat break, and it should sit flatter, too. You just use, like, an X-Acto knife and just shave a little bit of the edge off, just to kind of round it a bit. Okay. 
I don't have a pencil sharpener, so I use a knife. Just make sure that you don't get little bits of PTFE in your Bowden tube. Because then it won't work too good. Zip ties on this to hold it all together, make it look good. Uh, what board do I have in the Ender 3? It's a Fly uh, RF E3. So it is a it's a drop-in replacement board that has a built-in Wi-Fi module and it runs RepRap firmware. So if you have an Ender 3 and you want to run RepRap firmware on it and have the built-in Wi-Fi and everything. This board's a drop-in solution. So you can just drop it right in and you are good to go. So, and yes, it does support Clipper. So you don't need to worry about that part if you're one of the Clipper people. So I probably will put Clipper on at some point, but right now I'm running it as is because kind of that's how the board's intended to be. It's designed to be a RepRap firmware board. So I'm gonna run it as it's designed for a bit. There we go. Get some heavy filament in there. Actually, I should be warming my bed up. What am I doing? What am I doing? Wasting time. for the end on the extruder side um you shouldn't really have to um as much where's my little clip there it is i knew i dropped it the one on the hot end side is the one you really got to make sure is uh is good oh great oh that's probably gonna belt real quick shit Shoot. Oh, that's a design oversight. That's a big design oversight. Whoopsie doodles. <laughs> Oops. Okay, we're good. We're good. <laughs> so the little clip um, decided to fall down the little hole and land on top of the heater block, which is 200 degrees Celsius right now. There we go. Okay, let me just make sure it extrudes fine. Okay, it does. We're good there, it's extruding. Okay, let's find something to print. We got Cura loaded up, so let me pull up the file and we will slice this. That's all. So, 
we are going with the full helmet. So obviously, um, this isn't gonna fit. So let's scale it down a bit. Let's scale it down 25%. I'll go bigger than that. 50. There we go. Oh, wrong button. Move it. There we go. Okay, that's too big still. There we go. So right now we have a stock settings. We're going to increase the speeds a bit. So we're going to bump things up. We're running RepRap here. It's a 32-bit processor. Let's bump some speeds up a bit. Outer wall. Inner wall, 60. Top bomb speeds. I'm okay with, yeah, I'll go a little bit faster. Travel speed, we'll go with 200. Initial layer 20, that's fine. Print accelerations, there we go. Let's go with, if it's still, infill 12, wall, inner walls at 1,000. Outer walls, we'll drop down the outer walls to 600, because those are outer walls. Those are what really looks good. Uh, travel acceleration. We are going to max that guy out. Now we're not running clipper, so I, I don't I don't want to push it too hard. It's been a while to figure out. I don't know how fast RepRap could run on these. Uh, we're going to leave that hop off. Fans on. Slice. We are going to run with the brim. I'm not a huge fan of this bed surface, honestly. Four hours. Let's see, what's our infill? Oh, that's why. So we're gonna drop our infill down quite low. Hours infill. We're gonna go like 5% infill. Grid. Where, uh, where is Gyroid? There we go. Top layers, bottom layers, okay. Full density, how many walls we got? Two walls. There we go. So we'll let it run, and then I'll, uh, I'll obviously, I'll take pictures of it, as always. I don't even think I need infill on this model. Uh, right at the top, I think I do. You know what? We're gonna run it no infill. I don't think this, yeah, you know what? You guys like watching Kyroid move anyways. No infill? Yeah, but the thing is, we're showing off the printer, so I want, I want it to move. I want to see how it handles Kyroid. But what I'm going to do is lower my first layers. Uh, top, bottom, thickness. Top layer, bottom layer. Two bottom layers. No, that doesn't really save anything. Okay. Whatever. Let's get it printing. Save to file. Save. I don't think we're going to chop it down enough to get it saving anyways. Or to uh, print within the remainder of the stream. We shall see. We'll let it go and then of course I'll take pictures of it. Put it on, put it on the Twitter. So make sure you're following me at 3DP Nero. Uh, you can get Mark 52 style beds. I'm pretty sure. I don't see why you wouldn't be able to. I, I think dynamic infill. Let's see dynamic infill. Uh, dynamic infill. Uh, um, I don't know if it has dynamic incura. Thickness, multiplier. I don't see dynamic infill. Infill mesh. Experimental. Fine, if you want, I was gonna I was gonna leave infill on just because you know it gives you something to look at. 
when it's printing, but I guess we'll turn it off then. I don't think it's going to save much time, honestly. So we're at 3 hours and 13 minutes. Okay, it saves an hour. Still not going to finish in time, but... Well, it's only a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, so I don't want to go too much with the variable. Oh. Okay, let it upload and then we shall get it going. Print, yes. So, remember, I just kind of eyeballed my first layer, so I'm going to have to probably live adjust my, uh, my squish. But we shall see. Yeah, we might be okay there, actually. Squish. You say if I have a P.O. box? I do not have a P.O. box. I don't know if I should get one. A few people have sent me stuff. Um, like, I don't think I'm going to go all... Oops, probably move my hand out of that part. Um, like Joel and do unboxing. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how things keep growing. I didn't think I'd be doing this this long, and it, the channel would be at where it's at right now. Um, with, you know, 280 people watching a live stream with sponsorships and me planning like some pretty big projects in the future but hey we are here so we'll see how it goes and i'm not complaining that so seems to be working pretty good no complaints there will you switch wire no i will not switch wire everyone i know a lot of people want to see me turn this into a switch wire um the thing is i have a switch wire um, so the only difference, if I turn this into a switch wire, I will lose an Ender 3, which I, I want an Ender 3 so I can do Ender 3 things, okay? A lot of people have Ender 3, so I want to be able to do things on it or show things off on it that coincide with what a lot of people have. Um, if I turn it into a switch wire, the only difference is the small, or is the, you know, the odd random component that's slightly different on it that is the mod to make it a switch wire. And then the rest is just a switch wire, which I, I have a full stream of building a switch wire. So it would only be like two hours of new stuff at most. Um, the the XY joints are a little bit different, uh, or the XZ joints are a little bit different, and the, the cylinder, or the bearing mounts are a little bit different. Like, But for the most part, it's, it's the same with just a few different parts. So I think I would lose more turning it into a switch wire than I would gain. If that makes sense. So. So we are not sticking. Maybe I gotta go down more. More squish. Maybe I have too much squish. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, would I build a free V2 form bot kit? I, I have two V2s. I'm building a V1. Um, I, I wouldn't be able to touch it for a while. Um, because between, like... Why aren't you working? I don't know why Fusion doesn't want to load on this computer. Oh yeah, I'm going to be doing how to print ABS on this thing now. Now that I got a full metal hot end in it, I, I'm going to be doing how to print ABS on it.
Yeah, I don't know what's going on with Fusion on this computer. I can't get Fusion to work. Every time I try to launch Fusion on this computer, it just crashes right away. Like it gets to the, the main screen, like you go to load something up and it just crashes. No Trodon jokes. <laughs> Build a V2 form bot kit for charity stream. Maybe. I, I would like to do a charity stream at some point. Um, we'll, we'll see. Um, I got a ton of plans, man. I got a ton of plans. I got, I got the, I'm, I've got parts on the way for a CNC machine I'm designing. Um, so yeah. Let's see here. I won't fusion watch. Do I have, is it open for some reason? Is it doing some sort of. Nope, it's not open. Open as, run as administrator. Let's try that. Uh, pr printing ABS on the Ender is easy through a trash bag over mine. Yeah, that's pretty much all you got to do. Um, first layer adhesion warping with ABS on Ender 3 is my nemesis. I don't like the bed. I don't like the bed material. Put PEI on it. I'm, I'm pretty tempted to order a energetic flex plate on this. I probably will put a flex plate on this with PEI. Um, because then I could just put a, a, a a $3 PL08 probe on it and do mesh leveling. Uh, ABS smell versus kit in the house. Um, so for those unaware, um, and it, it crashed again, dang it. Um, this room that I run my printers in is in the basement. I have one vent in the room, which is plugged. Like it's not like the vent is closed. I actually have it plugged. I got it taped up. So the vent is plugged. I'm in the basement. I keep the door closed when the printers are running. And I work in a plastic injection mold facility that builds plastic injection molds. And we have a 3000 ton press that goes through like hundreds of pounds of ABS a day. So I'm exposed to way more of this stuff at work than I'll ever get exposed to down here in my basement. Um, but I do keep the kit out of the room and I do try to keep everything contained to this room. That is my safety procedure. So, and yes, I do got a fire extinguisher under there. Yes, so for this, I am running the stock heat sink. I swapped out the heat brake for a titanium uh, Chimera heat brake. So I went, it's actually from Triangle Labs on AliExpress. They make a titanium heat brake for the Chimera. I have that installed in here right now. And then what I've done is I, you could literally just throw the original block back on, um, but I don't like this thing. So I just put a V6 block on it with a V6 nozzle. But. Is the Creality bed similar to the Ultra? Exactly. It's the same thing. It's a glass with that weird carbon fiber texture, mesh texture on it. So, yeah, the first layer ain't great, but it's going down. Hope we don't get curling. Why don't you use their bi-metal Chimera heat break? Um, because it's more money. It was like, by the time you factor in shipping, it was like $30. This was $5. So, plus all my other printers have bimetal heat breaks. So, the Ender 3 isn't my isn't a workhorse printer for me. This is for testing and evaluation of stuff and mods and whatnot. So, I can't get over how big this thing is. Like, just to give you an idea. So, like, look at the size of this. It's massive. So this isn't even a direct feed setup, okay? This has no extruder in it, okay? So just for comparison, here is an old revision of the V0 direct feed tool head, which has a hot end in it and an extruder. I tempted to put one of these on this thing actually. Maybe I'll do that one day, we'll see. stop showing it <laughs> but here's the thing this is an outdated revision if you had printed this you would have thrown it in the garbage because we're still the design is still changing on it like it's changed like quite a few times since then 
Yeah, they're all big because I, I don't want to say bad things, but it's because people take the simple route when it comes to designing these. They, I need a fan here, I need a fan here, and just block texture and design it in Tinkercad or something. Like every now and then you find something that's kind of cool, but for the most part, a lot of them are pretty blocky. Uh, find those hot end coolers with long ducts don't have enough veins. Yeah, this has like a cross, like I can feel the air coming out the side. So it is putting air into the, the heat sink. Plus it is a titanium heat break now. So we should be okay, I'm hoping. So. Never rule out glue stick. <laughs> I don't think we're gonna have to resort to that, hopefully. You know what, I'm gonna try un okay, if the stream crashes, you guys were awesome tonight. I'm gonna try uninstalling Fusion and reinstalling it and see if that works. running as manager and task and task and task let's try this uh fan shroud We'll see. I apparently I have a replacement BIQ. I'm just gonna. Is it BQ? Are you supposed to call it BQ? I have a replacement BQ H2 apparently on the way. Um, they've made some changes to it, I think. Um, so when that shows up, I plan on putting it back on because I do like right now. I, I may do a video of this as is this week. Um, it'll mostly be complaining about the design and things I don't like because honestly, I'm not a huge fan of these all-in-one. Um, assemblies for a hot end. I, I'm not a huge fan of them. Um, even the Hamera and the LGX is pretty good. Apparently the LGX is pretty good, but um, I, I there are downsides to this style of monolithic hot end plus extruder combo um, that make me prefer traditional setups where they're separate. So BQ. Uh, I think it's BQ is fine. In Chinese Mandarin, it's like Bichu. Bichu. I, I can see that. Oh, slow first layers are slow. Okay, so anyways, while that's doing its thing, I officially have components for Toasty Boy now. Not many, but I do have some. So update, we have a, you know, I have the mosquito. I'm putting a mosquito in it. It's a V1 mosquito that I got during the group by like ages ago. Um, so it is going to run a mosquito. Oh, downloads. Let's reinstall fusion. Okay. So anyways, I'm going to run a mosquito in it. Um, we are going to use one of the Omron, um, uh, quote unquote, B stock, quote unquote, yeah, I don't know where it is, clone, uh, bed probes, but I got my eight millimeter rods for the bed. Um, these are actually old rods from a uh, tall boy that I chopped down. So I got the eight millimeter rods and then we do have a controller. So for a controller for 
Toasty Boy. We have ourselves an SKR Pro V1.2. Uh, and this is courtesy of our good friends at uh, Sparta 3D. So he sent me this over. Um, I'm going to be putting some 2209s in it. But the reason we're running like this is I wanted a board with six steppers. Okay. And as you can see, we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, I'm running direct feed. So I only have one extruder. It's not like a switch wire where I need the two extruders. So that's why I needed five there. But I only need five of these. Well, you have to remember the fourth one or the sixth one, in this case, is gonna have this little guy installed in it. This right here is a PT100 amp board. So you solder the headers on it, you plug this into a free stepper driver slot, you reassign some pins and clipper, and then you plug your, uh, what is it? What did I put? Just had it. Oh, it's over here. Uh, you plug your PT100 uh, temperature probe right into the driver slot because the pins have been all reassigned and whatnot and they're all connected and boom Bob your uncle and now you have PT100 support on any board with a step stick form factor so that's what we'll be doing with this board it also has like three fan controls um, three heater outputs so in reality, you could run five fans off this, plus your bed heater. Um, I haven't actually dove into this board, so I didn't even know it existed really. Um, bed power, you could run separate motor power. So for those that are unaware, the more volts you feed a stepper motor, the better it runs. So you could theoretically run this board at 24 volts for your, your drivers um, or for your like heaters and everything. And then you could feed the motors 32 volts or what is it 36 volts i think they can take or 32 i can't remember um but you can feed higher voltages to your motors and get even more performance out of them and a little bit quieter and a little bit less heat generation so that's something that we actually designed into uh taco raven was another board that supported that the prototype board we had so i i might do that with this i'm tempted to try that um I got a 200 watt, 24 volt UHP power supply coming in uh, that I'm going to be using, but I might run separate voltage. Uh, they're good for 50 volts. Oh, 35 volts. Yeah, 35 volts are the caps um, on the step six. So you could run a 32 volt power supply um, to your motors on this board if you wanted to. I might do that. I don't know if it's going to be worth it. I'll talk to a few people, um, but it is something you can do. Um, uh, TMC 20 of China's max out of 28. Ah, uh, I know we had the 2130s on Taco Raven. So. Oh, 5160s. I'm not going to put 5160s on this. How much are 5160s on AliExpress? Let's find out. Express. Can you even get 5160s in step six format? The thing is, I don't really, you have to remember, I don't really need 5160s. Um, Mello sells them. You can get step one. Amazon. Okay, let me see Amazon Canada. Oh, you can't get 5160s in step stick. Yeah. I think this is for one. It's Canada, and we never get anything at a good price. Yeah. 
<laughs> Canada, go Canada. Well, anyways, here's the thing. That is an option on the board. So what I will probably do, honestly, is I got 20, 2209s on the way, is I'm going to put 2209s in here. I'm going to run the whole thing at 24 volts. And then what I may do is in the future swap out to a higher voltage driver if prices come down or whatever or i get my hands on some for testing and then try running them at a higher voltage to see if there's any noticeable improvement honestly i doubt you're going to notice anything going from 24 to 32 volts i don't think you're going to um but if you could run them at say 48 volts that would be probably the sweet spot because that's like i believe that's what a lot of uh industrial stuff runs at Clipper has an issue with 5160. Okay, so we're going to skip it completely then. Say, uh, 22, 24s. Put the, uh, oh, okay, back on. Uh, TMC. So, yeah, that is an option, like. Yeah, 2209s are only good for 28 volts. Twenty one thirties, yeah, the twenty one thirties, because that's what we have in Taco Raven. Taco Raven has twenty one thirties, and it has a separate uh, voltage in. So you can do that on Taco Raven, but the twenty one thirties, which hey, it, it's the future. Why are we using twenty one thirties in the future? But honestly, like it's a three D printer, you're not going to be maxing out performance of these mo motors, anyways. Um, especially printing like high temperature materials you're not you know printing them at super high rapid speeds so having that extra overhead probably isn't really going to get you much so we are over extruding a bit it looks like uh, i don't think we have any form of pressure advance on this at all also No, we do not. So. But yeah, this is the power supply I will be using. Um, I'm using a UHP 24 power supply um, instead of an LRS 24 volt. So it's still the 200 watt 24 volt power supply, but it's more compact. So your mains comes in one side and your output is on the other side. So it's a little bit of a different form factor. Um, I'm just trying that out. Um, people like them. So I'm gonna be using that um, to try and save a little bit of room. Because why not? I do have an LRS around somewhere, but I think it's a 12 volt one. Yeah. Yeah, 36 volt. That's one thing like, uh, let me see here. And of course I reinstall Fusion and it crashes again. I can't get Fusion to open. Okay, let me let me go around the long way and download the pictures I uploaded to um, uh, Russian cat food. Max, if you're still listening, belts. Okay, let's see. I gotta find pictures I uploaded days ago on Discord.
Oh, that's not it. Where are my pictures? I don't know. I've shared them on uh, Twitter. Yeah. So for those unawares, um, this right here is unnamed CNC project. So this right here is something I would like to build this year. This is um, a couple revision old model of it. It's changed quite a bit. It's actually a bit bigger on both the X and the Y axis. Um, but this is the little CNC machine I'm designing. So, so that will be uh, hopefully the longish term goal of the channel. Um, other than 3D printing stuff will be to build this guy. So this will be mostly videos though. I don't think I'll be streaming much. I might do the odd part of this on stream or at least talking about stuff as stuff shows up. But uh, this will probably be over the course of the next half year to a year. So, and stuff like that is only possible because of donations from you guys, memberships, the Patreon support. You guys are all awesome. And sponsors of the channel such as Spangs. Oop, wait, wrong side. Thanks. So because of them, we can do all these awesome things and allows me to be able to accomplish these projects and create awesome videos that you guys enjoy. What am I calling the CNC machine? I don't have a name for it. Right now it is just, I save it under Avro. Um, that is the working project name of it is Avro, but the actual machine itself does not have a name. Is that C-Channel Extrusions on the X-Axis? No, it is dual L-Channel 3060 or 3030. So it is um, the actual bomb. Let me pull up Masumi. Uh, how much you want to bet Masumi's down? Okay, Saturday nights Masumi does maintenance apparently. So anyways, what it is, it is two L-Channels. Um, So these are 3060s from Switchwire. What it basically is, is actually, so these are two pieces, but imagine this was one piece, okay? So it'd be one of these and then another one underneath it. And then I'm going to bolt them together and then put a back plate on them for cross bracing. So that gives me enough room to run the ball screw through the middle. And then these plates on these sides are half inch aluminum plate that will be drilled and bored and whatnot. And then it's NEMA 23s all around with 1204 ball screws for the Z and the X and 1605 ball screw for the Y moving the bed. And right now we are looking at roughly uh nine inches by 11 inches by three and a half inches roughly because it's all shifting around and i'm waiting for stuff to show up before i order more and i gotta measure stuff and yada 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 uh the wall street bets oh wait whoa, wait whoa. okay let me catch up oh i missed a lot of chat okay uh where's the place out of the um, okay, so in terms of closed loop on 3D printers, I think closed loop on 3D printers is pretty much a waste. As long as your motors are running at speeds that are they're tested at, like you've, you've verified they can run at the speeds, um, you're feeding them the correct amount of current, you're running a type of controller that can handle that speed. So example, trying to push a, a Core XY printer, such as a Voron, um, super fast on a 8-bit Marlin machine is not a good idea, but you can do it on Clipper. So as long as you have a controller board that can handle what's being requested, your motors are running at the correct currents and the correct speed, you really shouldn't be losing steps, okay? If your print is deforming to the point where your hot end is crashing into it and you're losing steps that way, odds are you, you don't want that print to finish anyways. So I, I can't remember the last time I've had a layer shift on any of my printers. Um, that wasn't an operator error like me 
trying to do 500 millimeters a second at 20k excel which it did for a little bit but closed loop steppers don't really make sense now in terms of machining yes closed loop steppers with cnc definitely makes sense because you are literally putting forces on your tool head with a 3d printer there is no force on your tool head so really you shouldn't have to worry about closed loop too much um see here chippy boy dave i i'm nah, i don't think i'm gonna go with the chippy boy We'll we'll see we'll see uh explanation on always on ssrs and the other ssrs that were mentioned okay so with solid state relays um usually there's a control voltage that's like a low voltage like 5 volt or 3.3 volt or up to i think 24 volts on a lot of them um voltage that basically flips the switch on and off that controls a high voltage current um some ssrs can fail um and when they do they fail always on and some are in an always on state and the current switches them off you want an SSR that switches on. You don't want it to be in a always on state and turning off when commanded to. Now, some SSRs come default one way or the other and you can control them via firmware. That's why I recommend whenever you put a printer for the first, a printer together for the first time and you power it up, um, put your hand on the bed or something just to make sure that it isn't heating up right away because if it is or actually a better way is just look at the light most ssrs have a little led on them that flashes or turns on when the ssr is putting power through so when you turn your printer on if you see a light pop up on the ssr and your bed starts getting warm turn it off right away odds are you need to have a correct pin assignment um call out in your config to fix that the problem is though usually you can't configure it until it's on for a while and you go through the whole setup process so you can get around that by unplugging the bed from the SSR, so it could try all it might. It's not hooked up to anything, so it ain't gonna do anything. Um, or you can get an SSR that the ones that are in the bill of materials right now in the sourcing guide are correct SSRs. I believe there was an old one on there that you could wire up the wrong way, potentially. It's been removed, though, so, now, so. Okay, who wants to see the, the, the Wall Street Bets model from Thangs.com? Honestly, though, uh, go on Thangs and look up Chaos Cortex. Cor I, keep, I keep saying Cortex. It's Core Tech. Um, but they do a bunch of awesome models. So that's where Stonks Boy is from. And this was printed uh, 0.2 layer height on my on Tallboy with 0.6 nozzle very minimal um support the only support was the brims of the glasses I... so that was a really good model actually they also did the burning meme oh yeah that's not attached to anything they also did the burning meme uh model that only benchy thing is going to get wall mounted at some point when i get around to it uh Good dimensions on the cnc router yeah andrew i'm hoping okay so the goal of it is um i want it to be an aluminum machine i don't plan on doing wood if i wanted to do wood i would probably do an mp cnc because god knows i have enough bearings okay and extra motors so i could probably do an mp cnc honestly for very minimal cost um part of me kind of wants to do one but i i i i can't justify it right now unfortunately now i do have my spindle already for the the project um, so I do have the spindle, uh, for the CNC. It's a 500 watt Daedalus spindle. Um, so not the R3D Daedalus printer, it's a spindle, um, but it's brushless, 500 watts, 48 volts. Um, it's three wire, so it is brushless. unlike the really cheap one. You see a lot of really cheap 500 watt spindles. This is not one of them. Um, it's got like less than a thou of run out um i've checked it with my uh inner rapid um it's a good spindle so i could slap one of these in an mp cnc and get it going pretty quickly honestly because i already have the spindle but this is going in um whatever project avro ends up being called but the goal is to build a small super compact well not super compact a small desktop class cnc um so within a 20 that a CNC that will fit on a desk, so not bigger than 24 inches deep 
plus extra room for wires and whatnot. Um, and then that will probably be close to that wide once I put a controller box on the side. Because right now I think it's 17 inches wide by 21 inches deep if I'm not mistaken. Um, but the goal is basically to build as rigid of a CNC in that size for I'm ballparking 1500 price wise it's I, I have no clue what it will actually be and again I'm paying Canadian so who knows um, but that's super rigid and just eats aluminum all day so that is kind of the plan now it's designed to be modular though so if you want to swap out the spindle all it is is this front plate right here you just need to have a front plate with a different mounting pattern and you can mount any spindle to it you should be able to there should be room same with the motors all three of the motors are held on by mounts so you should be able well okay the 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 y motor is on an actual bracket but the x and the z motor are just brackets so if you want to swap to any motor um servos clear path whatever it's just a different bracket and it's belted to it the reason it's belted is uh one it allows me to um bend over the motors um, so that they're within the volume of the printer as much as possible, or the printer of the CNC as much as possible. And two, I hope the belts slip before something breaks in the event of a crash. That is why. So it's, it's a manual anti-crash measure. So. Uh, what bolts do you use to attach the Dragon Hot End to the Boron print head? M2 are too small and M3 look too big. M2.5. It's called out in the manual, um, in the bill materials. Uh, Chaos Cortex designs amazing well. Yeah, they they do some good stuff. Um, follow uh, what's her name on Twitter? Uh, Chelsea? I want to say Chelsea? Yeah, she's she's working on this right now, Chelsea. Uh, monkey. So she's doing a King Kong model right now, which I hope she does a Godzilla model. So yeah. So that they post their stuff on Thang. So they they make some good models. So yeah. Uh, low rider or print NC? Okay, so the print NC is good. Um, I kind of like it. The thing is, I'm not a huge fan of the. Uh, just the steel as the structural component. Um, I, I think there's too much of a variable there. Plus, it's a bigger machine. I don't want that big of a machine. I think I can get a machine more what I want within the size I want going my own route. Plus, it, it's just practice for uh, 3D modeling. That's what this whole thing started was. I was teaching myself fusion. Um, that's going to be a good model, I think. Coming out clean. Um, so I kind of wanted to do my own thing. I wanted to build it the way I wanted to build it. There are some things I like with the Print NC. There are things I don't like. I think the Print NC is more of a beefy router than a desktop CNC mill. Okay. Um, if I was going to go bigger, I would go a Print NC style machine. Um, yeah. So I know I know you can adjust them. I just think that machine scales up more than it scales down. Um, if that makes sense. The low rider is a wood machine. I, I, I want to chew aluminum. I would love to do steel. Um, however, that's kind of unfeasible at the home gamer level without really going into it. Unfortunately, we, I've looked into it. Um, spindles get really expensive and really bulky and you need, you basically need steel. You need the machine out of steel to cut steel. Yes, you can cut steel on a desktop CNC, but you're cutting at like six thou depth of cut, and it takes forever, and ain't nobody got time for that. They already did a Godzilla model? Oh, okay, I gotta go find it then. Forced to be abandoned because of the Americans. <laughs> Are you conceited on having the gantry flex with reinforcing Y axis for these on plates um i'm not a fan of, of wheels on the extrusions I, I i'm going rails that i like rails honestly 
Plus mounting stuff to rails I find is a lot simpler and a lot more compact than having to encapsulate the extrusions with an assembly with wheels. Uh, Elite Machine Works, yes. Um, a lot of these extrusions are high rigidity. They are high rigidity. Um, they're, it's all 3060. Um, I could go up to 845, um, but it, those get pricey really quickly with high rigidity. Um, same with 40, I, I don't know about the 40 series. I, I think I'll look at 845, but um, I don't want the machine getting too big. So we'll see. I mean, look at look at the teardown of a carbide, um, carbide 3D or a carbide CNC. Um, their desktop CNC. That thing right there is, there isn't as much to it as you would think. So, so yeah, so I could go 4080, but that makes everything much bigger, much more bulkier. Um, I, I'm, tr I think the, the high rigidity 3060, um, the gantry C channel, that whole back of it is open. So I wish fusion would load. I don't know why fusion is, won't load, but, um, let me, let me watch the print, print, enjoy the music. Let me find, um, me, let me actually download the pictures. I can't find it. Searching, searching, searching. The reason Discord searching working. Uh, sixty sixty high rigidity. That would pretty much double the size of all my extrusions, though, because right now it's thirty thirty base. Um. So the, the, the Z, uh, plates are both half inch aluminum, um, uh, 6,000 series aluminum probably. And then the, the C channel is 30 series, um, L channel. So two of those though, they don't make high rigidity versions of those, but I'm going to put bracing along the back to hopefully bulk that up. Plus they're going to be bolted to the extrusions plus linear rails, MGM 15s. So it should be okay. I think. Um, and then the bed itself, the whole bottom assembly, all those extrusions are high rigidity 3060. So. Oh yeah, I, well, I, I'm filling it with epoxy. Oh, believe me. I, or sand at least. I, I'm filling it up. So luckily they're extrusions, so it's easy to add stuff into it. Just flip it around and pour it in. So. I can't find any pictures of this thing. Where did I post them? Oh, I know where I posted them. Plus, the plan is I have to be able to build it inside and then move it to my garage. Um, my garage is unheated. I live in Canada, so it's cold. So I want to be able to move it, move it. Like I, I want to be able to um, move it around if I need to. Um, yeah, so I can't make it too heavy. It's got to be movable, if that makes sense. Oh, I'm going, Mike, I'm going China rails. I'm going China rails all around. Just cut the profile of the machine out of the doorway. <laughs> Why is there a CNC shaped hole in the door? Oh, reasons. What is it doing? What are you doing? 
Oh, it's doing walls. I dare you to epoxy the base to a small tooling granite plate. I'm going to borrow my buddy's welder and I'm going to weld up a, a table for it. So I'm going to, I'm going to actually do a weld up a table. But yeah, the, the rails are, the Z rails are MGN 15 and the X and Y are MGN 15. Um, I could go HGR. The problem is HGR um, add up quite a bit in price and they stand a lot taller, which won't let me get it as compact, such as for the, uh, how far front the motor is or the spindle is off of the X axis. Um, if I go HGR series, it adds like an extra inch of push out. So I'm trying to keep everything as compact as I can. So. But we'll see. There is machining in it. It's not a true like off the shelf, you know, slap it together like a Voron is. Uh, some of the plates do require machining, which I'll have to do on like one of the machines at work. So Friday after work, bring in the stuff to work to work on the bridge ports. Oh, that welded Benchy. Oh my God, that thing was bad. I did that like a year ago. I completely forgot about it and found it in my toolbox um, on that day actually, that I shared the picture. I can make pieces of metal stick together pretty well with welding and I can fill holes and add stock, but um, I'm, I'm not great when it comes to not melting edges. So for those who happen to work on an injection mold or die every now and then, yeah. Uh, did it break 10 minutes? Actually, that probably took me like 20 minutes. That was back when I was learning how to weld. Uh, my MPC and C never got past the wiring stage. It's now pieces broken in the garage. Oh, that sucks. I, that's kind of like my V2. So Tallboy was originally a 2.2 and it sat there unfinished, just needed wiring. Um, like literally I had all the wiring. If you looked at it, the printer was done, but I had needed everything underneath the hood. And it sat like that for like a year before I ripped it all apart and rebuilt it as a 2.4. Uh, Zen Blender. Print those plates out of ABS. So here's the funny thing. I'm actually going to print those plates out of ABS. Or actually, well, ABS because I have tons of ABS. Um, but I'm going to print all the plates out of ABS to ensure that everything that I designed in terms of hole alignment and assembly alignment and everything actually works properly. Um, and then I'll mill them because I have a bridge port at work. I can just go to work and bridge port them out. I have, like, they have DROs, so I just need to know X, Y coordinates and I can just go to town um because honestly it's just slots and holes so it's not that bad um especially when you have a bridge port with a dro so that's what i'm going to do so i'm going to print all the components out to test everything to make sure my design actually works and then i'll go and machine it all out of aluminum Yes, uh, bellows. I have looked into it. Um, I know where I'm putting the bellows. Um, the x-axis will actually be pretty easy. I'm going to do it, like if you watch this old Tony, um, when he built his, um, his router, how he just had the plates on the top and bottom of the x-axis, and then just bellows along that. I can do that with mine. Um, it does work dimensionally. Um, my z-axis, I'm probably gonna have to print some stuff to hold some stuff, but it should be okay. And then my y-axis, um, let me see here. Yeah, my Y axis is, um, I should be able to basically enclose it all rigidly with like aluminum plate, um, like one eighth inch aluminum plate. And then there is one part where I am going to have to put a uh, set of bellows so that I can enclose this pretty good. That's actually one of the recent changes I did was I had to shift a bunch of stuff around and make it actually bigger. So I didn't lose room to having uh, protecting everything. So, But again, this is a process in learning and design. So. Because I would just love to just grab a bridge port and have it in my garage, but unfortunately I can't do that.
Yeah, you don't you don't want. Um, I I've seen them ghetto fab some stuff for our CNCs at work when like some of the the ways covers break, um, and they got to keep stuff out of the ball screws when the ball screws are this big. Um, yeah, fun times. Always needs to be bigger. I know. It's like, oh, if I make it bigger, like, I wanted the machine to be able to machine everything originally um, that the machine would need to be machined out of. Kind of like how a Voron can print, every Voron can print every printed part of a Voron um, that's required to make it functional. I don't think I can get around this for the, at least the Z plates. The Z plates are like 13 inches tall. I don't think I have enough room for that, at least with the one setup. Uh, what controller board are you going with? I don't know. Electronics are one thing I have barely looked into. I'm all about the mechanicals at this point. But it's going to be NEMA 23 with like the what? The TB or B6600 or whatever those drivers everyone uses. Um, I might go Mach 3. We'll see. Um, but it's printing pretty good though. Not too bad. Extruder is... Room temperature, all the motors are good. He thinks it ramps is good for a DIY build. Um, if you run Clipper on it, sure. And you're okay with 12 volts. What kind of control do I want? Um, it it uh, it to make the the burr noises and do the cutty cutty. Software is something I need to dive into. I, I I barely looked into it. I freely admit that. I'd like to be able to do full 3D. Like, it's, it's only going to be a three-axis machine. I'm not putting a four, fourth axis or anything funky on it. Um, yeah, I've seen a lot of Linux CNC mentioned. Mach 3 has been mentioned a bunch. Um... We'll see. I still remember. I this this isn't gonna be doing anything for months. I have months. Like this is gonna be like a late summer to fall project, and I gotta clear up my garage first, so I have room to put it. So. So we'll see. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, there's Gerbil, there's that. You know what? Unfortunately, you know, Clipper doesn't speak inch. Um, so Clipper is, uh, as much as I love Clipper, Clipper is useless in our regard here. So we can't really, uh, can't use the one firmware I really like, unfortunately. I don't even know if Clippers can even talk to tw NEMA 23s. Probably not. Uh, look ahead. Yes, I, I know about look ahead. Like I, I'm, I'm not a machinist. I'm a me uh, I'm a wrench monkey. I, I put the tools together, and I, I know manual machines. But I do know a bunch about CNC machines and how they operate. And you know, I was a supervisor, so I had to kind of I had a crash course on a bunch of the stuff and what to look for on them. So, uh, what do I think of the BQ SKR Mini E3 2.0? Uh, Victor, it's a, it's a good little controller board. I have one in my Voron V0. It works just fine. It's a good board if you only need four drivers and no expandability. DMG mooring. Yeah, we have some DMGs at work. I need a board with external stepper pins. Yeah, see the big problem is though, clipper don't speak inch. And when it comes to ma machining, I'm all inches. Like I, I know millimeters because of 3D printing, but the moment I grab a bridge port, it's all thou. I, I need thou. If you tell me to cut something to a certain millimeter size on a bridge port, I am just lost. Luckily, DROs, you can push a button and it switches it to metrics. So we're good there.
Acorn CNC. Um, now here's a question. Um, I know Duet, Duet Three. They they boasted about like the 5160s on it are super beefy and can handle NEMA 23s. But can RepRap firmware? Is it fully? Can it? Can, I don't think it can fully support. Um, CNC, like all the milling operations, like G17 and all those funky G codes that uh, that are native to CNC that don't exist in 3D printing. Yeah, CMZ. That's the fun part about designing a CNC. I'm so used to metric when it comes to the every or um, inch when it comes to machining stuff. I'm like sitting there and I have a calculator open because everything is Masumi extrusions and Chinese AliExpress components, which are all metric. But I'm so used to working in inches, I need to convert everything so I can wrap my head around it. Oh yeah, like uh, Fusion 360 can do all the conversion. Like that's not a big issue. I'm just I, the joke about Clipper not speaking inch means it, that like Clipper can't do all the CNC stuff that CNCs need to do. Like you, you tell Clipper G17, it doesn't know what the heck it's doing. It doesn't do arcs and all that stuff. But software is after electrical, which is after hardware, which is after CAD, and I'm not done the CAD yet, so. Still got a while. We got a, we got a kill time before uh, Toasty Boy gets built because we're waiting on stuff to come in. Because um, as much as that controller board is cool, I can't run a printer with just a controller board. I need the printer. Um, so Toasty Boy is going to take us into probably early summer. There's going to be a lot of playing around with that. And then CNC stuff is on the side. This is just kind of like side project stuff. Uh, Elite Machine Works. Exactly. Like, 3D printing G-code is not proper G-code. It's like somebody saw what G-code was and went, hey, cool, we're just going to steal some of those ideas and functions, but we're going to make it do our own thing. Um, it, it's not proper G-code. 3D printing G-code is not G-code. Like, for example, when you look at, you know, let me pull up some G-code here. Uh, yes. Uh, okay, so here. So... Right here, this is the G code for the, the helmet, right? Um, see how it says G1, X100, Y this, E that? CNC G code doesn't have this G1 in front of every line because 3D printing G code, because of it was all designed around the limitations of crappy 8-bit processors running at toaster speeds, um, it needs to be, the command for each line needs to be called out, okay? So you have to have G1 in every line because it literally reads line by line by line. Whereas CNC G code, you can go G1, X0, you know, X0, Y0, and then go X2, Y2, X3, Y3, et cetera, et cetera. Like it just remembers what the, like, it just remembers what the, the what is being told. So it's like when you you know you give somebody directions, you say turn down the, go down the street and turn right. You don't go put your foot on the pedal, accelerate to the speed limit. When you get to the end of the street, brake. Then you put your hands on the steering wheel and turn. CNCG code just goes go down the street, turn right. I've told you you're driving. You you know how to drive. Keep driving until you're told not to drive anymore. So it's kind of weird. So VFDs and bigger spindles. I I don't know how big I um this thing can handle. Uh, right now it is a 500 watt spindle. I could probably put a bigger one on it, but we'll see how it works with 500. So. Printing pretty good. Uh, 750 watt, 62. Yeah, this is a 500 watt, um, 55, which I'm actually kind of happy. It's a uh, ER16 call it. It's not ER11, so I can actually go up to three eighths or 10 mil. 
Not that I'll be hogging much at, you know, three eights, but I, I have support for three eights. Uh, the whole kit minus the steel tube for print NC is under one grand, uh, one grand US, but also I don't have the room inside. Whatever I build, I have to be able to build it in here and then bring it outside. So I can't do a print NC inside. So that's why I want, I want desktop. I want something small that I can move around if I need to by myself. Because again, my garage is unheated and it, when it drops to winter, it's like negative 20 in there at times and that's Celsius. Start with 500 watts and all of a sudden a year later you're bolting a water cooled two and a half kilowatt spindle vfd combo and wondering where you can get three phase in your garage well that's a good thing about my garage my garage my electrical panel is actually in my garage so when it comes to if i need to add anything it, it's right there so but i i, I want to get some stuff hooked up i want to get a separate outlet like a higher amp instead of the 15 amp uh receptacle out there and a bunch of other stuff so get that done before until we fundraise for a separate workshop <laughs> near you. Well, if you, hey, donations are open. Anything you put into the channel, you get back out of the channel. Well, in terms of how that spindle performs, um, if you, if you want to get all technical, focus. it has made chips. That little smiley face, it has cut steel. I, I totally threw a three mil ball, uh, carbide end mill, ball end mill that I had in there and literally just carved it by hand. Dremel. Pretty much. I probably could use it as a Dremel. Like, I do have some... Uh, what did I... I don't know where I put it. Like, I did bring... I do, you know, I do have tooling in my toolbox, so I grabbed some stuff from home. Uh, what's the max RPM? It, here, I'll, I'll... You know what? Let's plug it in. Um, it goes up to 12,400 something ripums. And it's 48 volts. apron let's see here
uh, good RPM for aluminum. That's what I've heard. Um, I just really didn't want to use a, uh, a router. Like, I figured... So, the original... Like, it's not based on, like, a carbide... Um, what is it? What do they call it? The 883? Um, it's not based on that. I just wanted it to be in the same form factor, like that desktop CNC class of printer, as the Bantam or the 883. Um, that's the kind of like form factor of printer I was shooting for, or printer of CNC I was shooting for. Um, and I think the, the Bantam has the beefier motor of the two, and that thing only has 250 watts. And it could, oh, oh, that ain't good. Crypt came loose, recrimp that. Um, and that only has 250 watts of a spindle. So I figure if I have more than that, I'm good. Uh, shoot. Here they go. Um, I had a bunch. Oh, that's a ramps. Why am I finding ramps? Why do I still have ramps? connectors went that fits right yeah that fits uh bantam is weak sauce yeah also never get a bantam because the same guy who uh was responsible for makerbot is in charge of the company or at least like the lead financer or CEO or whatever the heck he is of Bantam. Um, so if you know what the heck that guy did who founded MakerBot did to sell a company out and drive it into the ground, he's now um, working for the company that makes the Bantam. So don't get a Bantam. Live, we got neutral, we got ground. Go. Negative. Voltage positive. And then the other one I was looking at that a few people were recommending was the uh, the Onefinity. Um, Three poopedus. Yep. Uh, Brendan, enjoy the build. Hopefully that thing's good. Hopefully you learn a lot. Have fun. Um, what was I gonna say? The yeah, the the one finity. Um, I was looking at that one. Here. One finity C and C. Yeah, this right here. A bunch of people were telling me about this one. Um, and at first I'm like, oh, that looks dumb. But you know what? Actually, after looking at it for a bit, um, no, all machines are currently back ordered. Well, okay. But I want to see the machines. Show me the machines. Anyways. Like this guy right here. It's like 30 millimeter solid rods for all the axes. But it's NEMA 23, but it's ball screw. So it's kind of like, cool. But it only mounts to a table. So it, in my eyes, it's still a router. Um, okay, let's see here. But it, it's a pretty nice looking router, I will say. Okay, so we got that, we got that. Got that there. Let me find something to sit this on. 
Uh, I don't know where I put it. I used to have a piece of foam that I would put this on. Okay, we got my power tables out of the way. Uh, I need power. Okay. Sorry, switch wire. Power for you. That ain't gonna reach. That'll reach. Ah, that ain't gonna reach. We'll just dangle the power supply off the uh, off the d desk a little bit. Okay. gonna buy a Bantam but ended up buying a Tormach. I would love like that kind of CNC but I no way I can justify that. There is no way. Um, Fangs is very generous but they're not that generous. Now if Raid Shadow Legends though, if Raid Shadow Legends, oh my god I will be all over that. So if you do see Raid Shadow Legends uh, advertisements on this channel, you know I'm getting a good CNC coming. Uh, with router, sure about power, but one speed. Yeah. Okay, so let's see here. Um, so we got it all hooked up right. I do. Okay, apparently. So, here's my spindle. There's my rip them. So right now, um, I just have an 8mm dowel in here. Because I had the dowel in here because I was checking the, uh, the run out. So... I just got the little potentiometer right now. Yeah, 12,000. Here we go. Put on a foam pad. There we go. Need to start selling merch. <laughs> Have you tried contacting my pillow? <laughs> Take the fan off. It runs pretty smooth. Like honestly, like. Yeah, the fan does vibrate a bit. I can feel the fan vibrating. Um, but doesn't it need the fan? Anyways, I shouldn't be running it too much. It's uh, 11 and my kid might be asleep. Well, he probably he should be asleep right now. So. But that's why CNC's live in the garage. Uh, just run a DC fan to cool it with filter. Huh. It's going to vibrate into the frame of the machine and add to the noise. Yeah, good point. So what, you just take the fan off and then you just put a, a normal DC fan in, on top of it? Or like... Fan. Fins are great. Straight. It's an air agitator. Yeah, true. Well, I don't have my little tool to pop snap rings off, so I'm not going to try that tonight. And it does come with the little driver board. So this all came in one package with a bunch of collets, which aren't bad. Uh, it's common mod. Okay. I don't even know how hot these get. I've never like put load on it. Back to the printing. Plus another thing, like I got a printer going, which the bed is drawing however many amps. I've got like three other printers in this room that are plugged in. 
they're they're in standby mode and that spindle at 500 watts and 48 volts um that's 10 amps or just over 10 amps if i'm not mistaken so Greg, hello. You're catching the last uh, like five minutes of the stream because we're going to end it soon. Still got, we're only halfway done the model, so it's definitely going to finish after stream. Uh, regarding the enclosure electronics, yeah, I'm going to go with a, a NEMA box. One of the, like, uh... I have this guy because I snagged it from work a while ago in the dumpster. But something like this. And Nima box. Aluminum. Opened up. Probably one of these, but bigger. I've had this one for a while. I was gonna use it actually on a printer way back before I knew any better. Uh quick question on the V0 bomb. It shows 24 gauge. Uh you should be using 20 gauge wire for your heater. For your uh, hot end and then for the uh, bed and mains I like to use 16 gauge but that's just me dumpster finds yeah you want to talk dumpster find Ugh. PHK ball screw now granted it's like fuck 15 mil I think it's like 15 mil of travel per rotation or something. It's like super fast. This is, a, this is way too fast of a ball screw. Um, but yeah, THK. And I'm, I'm missing the end. I only got the, the one block, the one BK block. Not the BF block. And the nut is um, a little wiper on it's busted. But it's shiny. It's fun to play with. Question about Voron size. Would a 250 be much easier to tune higher accuracy and speed than a 300 build space? Uh, you will find tuning the smaller ones are easier because they will be more rigid and less moving mass. However, the 250 to 300, you probably won't see too much of a difference. Um, so we're talking like maybe a couple hundred millimeters a second of acceleration, if that, and I doubt you'll even notice it. So if the only thing you're worried about that's stopping you from going with the 300 millimeter, is you worried about the extra time it will take the tune? Don't be concerned. They're pretty dang close. Uh, what fan assembly is the Ender? So right now, um, it is the whatever I found on AliExpress, or correction, uh, Thingiverse Special. Uh, let me find it here. Ender 3 B2 uh, 5015 fan. Okay, this is what I'm using. Because this is literally the first thing that showed up. So this is it. It's the Ender 3 V2 5015 fan duct by Anim Sparrow. And it's a remix of the San Santa fan duct. Yep, that's what I'm using. Good for a printer bed. Um, if honestly, I was thinking of using it for uh, camera mount, like. Uh, that camera up there that I have fixed and putting that on an assembly and moving it to the pulse. Actually, I have no idea. I I think it's slightly, I don't know if it's, I don't think it's bent, but I'll, I'll do something with it. Or I'll just pull it out every now and then and go, hey guys, look, I got a THK ball screw for no reason. So uh, the reason people don't recommend going with the 350 um, is with the 350, the problem you run into is it's a 14 inch bed, okay? 350 isn't super common in 3D printers. So finding bed components such as the flex plate, the magnet and the heater pad, um, you're gonna see a big price increase because they're not as common. 300 millimeter is super common. So there's a lot of components for it. And when there's a lot of components for it, it's cheap. So there's that. Also at 350 millimeters, um, 
Core XY starts to have some issues once you start going beyond 350 because of belt length and keeping it tuned and properly tensioned and whatnot. Um, that's why we don't recommend going beyond 350. And uh, the printer just gets big. Like, it gets big. Like, um, let's see here. Rotate. So this is a 250 and this is a 330. So Tallboy is actually 330 by 330 by 400. And uh, this is how big the front panel is on it. So imagine another 20 millimeters. And that's, yeah. So they get big quick. Now in terms of uh, camera, cause someone was asking what camera. Um, on this guy, I have a boom arm camera, which let me find it here because I literally had the, I've had that camera mount since Tallboy was a V1. Um, let me find it. It's on Thingiverse. I found it on Thingiverse. Let's see if I can back far enough if I can find it. But all it is is literally a boom that sits out in front of it. Um, and the camera points back. I can't find it on Thingiverse. I found it on Thingiverse ages ago. Like, it is literally like I printed that thing three years ago. Um, and then for the rest of my printers, um, I've given up putting cameras on printers. And what I have is a mic stand with a webcam hooked up to it. It's actually hooked up to Tallboy. And what I do is I move it around and I point it at whatever cam a printer I'm printing with at the moment. So, uh, if I'm printing like switch wire, I'll put that in front of switch wire because I've given up trying to keep cameras on all these printers because I don't have enough cameras. And with the price of them and whatnot right now, I just got lazy. So now I just move a single camera around or I just move it back so I can watch multiple printers at once. That's what I do. <laughs> uh, do I have ceramic or PI bed standoffs? On uh, V226, I have um, stainless steel, I believe. And then on Tallboy, I actually have fiberglass. Um, I took a, um, a set of hole drill, you know, like a hole saw drill. Um, and I drilled some pucks out of fiberboard, which is compressed fiberglass insulation. It's really like it's dense. It doesn't compress. Um, and I drilled some quarter inch uh, thick pucks out of that. And I used that for the bed on V2 or on Tallboy. Hopefully in March, I'll continue with the Ymir. Yeah, the, the thing with large Core XY you just have to be careful of is belt stretch. Because remember with Core XY and Square Cube Law, or not Square Cube Law, because it's only two dimensions. But as you get bigger on a Core XY, the belts get even more longer because it's Core XY and the belts have to go through that whole path. So when you make your X bigger, you have to double that belt length on the X and then double it on the Y when you make the Y bigger. So it just, the belts get long quick. And with like six millimeter belts, it, keeping them tensioned properly could be a pain. So you have to go to like nine millimeter belts and whatnot. And it just, it adds up. Yeah, nine millimeter belts would definitely be what at six hundred millimeters on a Core XY. That's what I definitely would recommend. The thing with Core XY, Core XY, in my opinion, is a good motion system for relatively normal to small size printers. It I, since it doesn't scale that well large, I don't see the point in going Core XY that large. I I think like a standard Cartesian style setup or like an Ultimaker gantry style setup would be beneficial. But the problem is then you have unsupported rods and yada yada yada. So. Yeah, nothing's perfect. And the thing is, we're all home gamers He'll here building stuff off with commercial off the shelf components. So you kind of have to make do with what you got. Uh, a bigger Voron with 12. Well, he here's the thing, uh, Elite Machine. You have to remember, everything on the Voron is designed because of 2020 mil uh, extrusions. Okay. And everything is designed to fit within the enclosure. So if you try to go to 12 millimeter belts, nothing on the gantry, if you look at the gantry, um, sits above or below the extrusion. So it's a 20 millimeter X-beam with two six millimeter belts. 
and everything fits within that sandwich, right? That, that envelope. So if you go to 12 millimeter belts, well, that's 24 millimeters plus the spacing, you're gonna have to go to bigger extrusions because now none of the XY joint parts will fit. You're not gonna be able to fit the bearings in there. So you literally have to expand everything to, if you're going from six mil to 12 mil belts, you'd have to go from 20 millimeter extrusions to probably 40 mil extrusions to keep everything within proportion. So, but yeah, it would be a complete redesign. It's like when somebody asks, oh, hey, can I use a uh, V-slot? It's the same thing. You, you can't use V-slot with MGM-9. So you have to go to MGM-12. And the moment you go to MGM-12, well, now nothing will fit. You can't put the panels on the side because the carriages stick out past the extrusions. And now you're redesigning the whole printer from scratch. You might as well start from scratch. There is a bigger Voron, it's called the V24. It was the only commercial Voron. Let's see here. So a V2 is a V2, a V2.4 is because it's the point, it's the fourth revision of the V2. The V24 is because it's 24 inches by 24 inches by 24 inches. This is the V24. You want a big Voron? This is a big Voron. So yeah. That's the big Voron. There is only one of them. And that picture is from three over three years ago, back when MZBot was an actual company. Also, that ran 8-bit Marlin at like sub 100 millimeters a second because 8-bit Marlin. Do I have any idea if it's still printing? Um, I think last time Max talked to them, they were. It was, I think. Oh. Next project V24. Um, the bomb on that is like several thousand. Like, it's all custom Masumi. Like, it's all high, like high tier Masumi extrusion. It's mill Delrin components. Um, like, that's a 24 inch by 24 inch slab of aluminum with a 24 inch by 24 inch PEI sheet on it. Um, dual extruder, dual nozzle. Um, yeah, this is this is a fully custom high-end machine. We're talking like multi thousands. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, I think yeah, I don't think Max is in chat anymore. But speaking of chat, um, it's like eleven thirty now. I'm I think I'm gonna call the stream. Um. So, hope you enjoyed the stream tonight. Uh, we did some modding. Let me fix the camera back up. Beep, 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 beep. Uh, why can it Voron 300 do better prints? Um, honestly, they can all print well. The difference is how fast you can print and all the V2s from 250 to 350 all print fast compared to like Ender 3 speeds. So they all print fine. As long as you take the time to tune them right, it's just the bigger ones because they are bigger, may require more tuning and you may not be able to push them as fast. And by as fast, I mean, you might not be able to do 5K XL. You might only be able to do 4,600K or 4.6K XL. Like you're still going fast. So I'm calling the stream now. Um, we got our little... Daft Punk helmet printing. I'll post pictures of it, obviously, um, on the Twitters after. So at 3DP Nero, make sure you follow me on Twitter. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button so you can follow along. I do streams every Saturday night. I try to put out one, maybe two videos a week, usually educational, going over some sort of theory or something with printers. I'm doing a lot of clipper related stuff right now. So I might do something with that this week, or I might just turn the camera on and complain about this thing for like 20 minutes and then somehow make a video out of it. We'll see about that. I don't know yet. Um, make sure if 
you liked the video or the stream, make sure you like that smash button, do all those YouTube analytic things. Apparently some X percent of you guys aren't subscribed to the channel. That is not right. More subscribe, subscribe. I don't know. That thing always pops up and um, I don't have that animation of ringing the bell, but pretend there's an animation of ringing the bell right now um, because that's the thing. Um, Raid Shadow Legends, I don't know. Thank you for Thangs for sponsoring the stream tonight. You guys are awesome. If you haven't visited Thangs yet, I do have a link in the description. Go there, create an account, download some Thangs, print some Thangs, share some Thangs, upload some Thangs. It's a great site, it's growing, and it's great to see another community out there for sharing 3D models, not necessarily 3D printing, but everything 3D model-wise you can find on Thangs. So good to see them growing, and they are a friend of the channel and they are sponsoring the stream tonight. So awesome shout out to Thangs for helping us do the things we do. For anyone who donated to the stream tonight, anything you guys donate goes right back into stream content or equipment or stuff for the projects that are coming up this year. So you guys are awesome. Anyone who's a member or a Patreon subscriber, one of these days I'm gonna start throwing together proper credits to thank you all in the videos. Uh, I've just been busy, man. <laughs> but you guys are all awesome. It's 11.30 now. I've been up since 7. You guys have a great weekend. Be safe out there. Wash your hands. Have a nice day.